are listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. We're going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice, burgundy snowboard. Okay, here we go again. We are back in the booth. Welcome to the bomb hole presented by Wild Mike's Ultimate Pizza, Solomon, and Pub Beer. Now, Stony Buds, how we doing, my friend? Let's get it, dog. Let's get it. Um, we have the Colorado kid, Nick Baden, in the booth. What's going on, Nick? What up, guys? Honored to be here. Thank you. We are very happy you're here. Uh, one of our favorite things to do on this podcast is uh, make fun of Colorado. So, uh, we... Do you have any, like, words sticking up for it? Do you rep Rado? Are you back I mean, Rado? the most beautiful state in the country. Uh, That's a heavy Maybe claim. the world places, <laughs> places open fields as well as big mountains. And then, you know, you got it all, like, winter, summer, fall, spring. I actually couldn't say enough good things about Colorado. But what, what I'm also say? down for the hate, you know. There's what? a lot of hate for Colorado in our uh, group of friends. A lot so. of traffic. A lot of... Angry traffic, I guess. There's not much actual snowboard traffic going through there these days. It doesn't seem like. Yeah, but if you live in Denver or yeah. Boulder and you want to go to the mountains, it's then almost impossible. Then you got impossible. traffic going to the mountains. It's yeah. almost an impossibility. Who's the who's yeah. the king of Rado? Yeah, who is the king of Rado? Chad O. Yes, he is. I mean, that's not even we a gotta question. you got to give him an air horn. That is a stupid question. <laughs> you got Doran Layborn there, too, and they're kind of like. Doran holds it down. They're a duel. They work together, so. Is Red Gerard, is he Rado or is he Ohio? He's a Brown, um, Browns fan. Yeah, he's definitely, he reps Cleveland pretty hard. He's been pretty down with Cleveland the last couple of years. He hasn't really been running Rado. But. W- would you consider yourself the prince of Rado by any chance? <laughs> I don't think I would consider myself the prince, but. Uh, I think we're going to consider you the prince. <laughs> I don't think I'm the prince. We'll give Chado the king and I'll be like a normal Whatever a normal person is, you know? <laughs> no, <laughs> normal civilian. We're going to go friends. Yeah, I'll be civilian. <laughs> okay, let's talk other Rado shit real quick. You rock studded snows. So that's some Rado shit. What? Studded, studded snow oh, tires? Oh, no. I did rock studded tires for one year. I got a uh, Forerunner, and they had studded tires on them, so I ran them. Since then, I have not run studs, and you, I don't support studs. Is I everyone guess. still driving Audis over there? There's a couple of people driving Audis, I guess. I haven't noticed a real Audi trend. Yeah. Um, my mom just got an Audi. Oh, see, there's, there's an Audi trend. <laughs> so busted. Let's give your mom an air horn. <laughs> All right. So uh, I was talking to Red Gerard, uh, current Olympic gold medalist, uh, getting some intel on yourself. Worst dude ever. Yeah, worst dude ever. Let's give him a little gunshot. <laughs> and uh, he said, first thing you brought up, Disney Next X. Can you explain and elaborate what that is? Yeah, so it's like, uh, it was four, I think they did it a few years. Um, It was like four kids. I was, I think, 12 or 13, and then Red was two years younger than me, so he was like nine or 10, and then there was two skier kids. And then, so they did that like a few years. I I don't know what year we were, you know, but uh, Danny Cass was our coach. Sarah Burke was the ski coach. And that's where I met Red, and, like, he came with his brothers and his parents. And we all stayed at the same hotel. Like, it was sick. We would hot tub and, like, whatever. We hung out, and then, yeah, I got to meet his family. Like, his little sister, who's now, like, 12, was, like, pretty much a baby. It was cool. And then I would see him coming after that, like, pretty often. And, yeah, Danny Cassie gave me, like, Sick grenade stickers. He gave me this grenade sticker that said Gretchen is hot. I put that like in between my bindings. I was psyched on it. And then if you win, you get to pre-run the X Games half pipe for like, it's not the finals, it's just qualifying, but like it's nighttime and it's baller. And I ended up winning and it was sick. I like knew some people that were in the contest as well. So that was cool. But I had to, you have to like put stickers or uh, duct tape over your goggles. You know, you can't have logos because it's a Disney thing. So, mm. But yeah, it was cool. Disney Next X Champion. So it's like yeah, a, it's like a contest, mm-hmm. and then you but get to pre-run it's the a pipe. A few at the days, open. and like you learn a uh, you learn a trick. Like there's a goal for each person, and uh. like you kind of ride. And then there's like these weird interview things, and then like we would all do homework together. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> and then it airs on Disney. Yeah, Channel. 
I don't even know if it was like on. It must have been like must have been just like a half hour thing though. I yeah. don't think it was like episodes, you know. But yeah, Danny Cass was the coach. It was sick. So, Our families were there. It was cool, dude. I bet Danny pulled down some chatter doing something like that. I have to remember to ask him when he rolls through here one day. Yeah, yeah. Another thing Red said talking about you back in the day he goes, dude. Did you you ever see footage of Nick back in the day? Quote unquote. He's like Nick was a jock. <laughs> Yo, straight <laughs> up. So happy to say that. <laughs> <laughs> whatever red was a jock uh no i was too whatever uh and that's sick like yo if you're gonna get good like jock it for a little bit and you'll get good like i think at this day and age it's probably right if you're trying to be a competitor ride all the yeah. time and if you're in the contest thing like you gotta be a jock everybody else is out there every day like actually scaring themselves every day so whatever, Red can call me a jock. I'll I'll own it. <laughs> like kind of bummed, but I'll own it at the same time. Athlete at the end of the day, the days of these no. guys that are just drinking beer and smoking cigarettes and I, not for the, training. For the record, I don't look at jock as a derogatory term. By the way, I love sports, and uh, but yeah, going back to to that, like I think it's a really good thing for people to hear. And y- you know, you it's hard to get good as you get older. Like, it's like, fuck it. If you're going to get good, get really good as a kid and just jock out. And then... Dude, and you don't care. Like, you're down to go to the train park all day. Like, mm-hmm. 9 to 3, boom. It's fun. And there's a couple people who are your age, or at least for me, there was people my age that were doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. It was like, let's do it. It wasn't even... There was, like, no question, you know. If you learn a trick when you're 12, you're going to be able to do it for the rest of your life. No doubt. It gets... There, but it's like when you're you wait, 33, guys, you wait, when you're guys. 33, you're like, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, as far as learning a trick, yeah, learning a trick, for, yeah. sure, yeah. for sure. I'm gonna go learn cab nines today at 45. <laughs> Not happening. Today's my day. So, there's an edit out there called hashtag Nick Baden on yeah. Vimeo. That shit is heat, dude. Different, I'm glad you liked it. Different Nick Baden than we see today. Um, he's rocking Red Bull helmet, rode for. For uh, Burton. And yep. yeah, pretty kinda, tight pants. Paint us a picture of that time period in your life and what that Nick Baden was all about. Um, Yeah, same person. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, same, yeah, same person, man. I know. I know what what like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. It was like most of that was at the Red Bull camp, you know, like they would do a camp in Aspen at the end of the year um, for like a week or two where we would. Get sled laps. Like, the mountain's already closed. It's on the X Games, like, half pipe and slope style course. So you're, like, on the same jumps, riding the same half pipe, staying at this baller hotel, like, and you just rode every day. There was people at the bottom. Like, everyone's there to help you, you know? Like, it is kind of weird, but um, I guess for me, like, around that time, it was, like, just snowboard a lot as much as you can and, like, things will happen, you know? And that was, like, kind of when, like, Seb Toots and Mark McMorris, like, were winning X Games, like, just started, and we're, like, doing double corks and killing it. And, like, the one option is to, like, try tricks every day and get better and fall. And so I think that's what that time was for me. It was, like, really scare yourself and learn these moves and learn how to fall. And then... During that whole time, like, meeting cool people, too, you know? Like, it's not... Like, a lot of people at those camps would be older than me, and I would meet them, and they would kind of be on a different wave than, say... Like, I would room with Scotty James sometimes, you know? And, like, people are just on different waves, and that's the way it is. Like, a lot of people like would go to those camps would be, like, some skier who's winning the X Games, but maybe he's also, like, filming some shit, and he's, like, doesn't really care that much to be at the training camp at the same time, you know? He's, like... It's a spring session. It's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I guess that's what that time was. For me. How was old like, were you? Um, I was on Red Bull till I was like 15 or maybe like 17, actually. Uh, I got on when I was 13. How does a young kid actually like get into these things? You know, at 13. Um, How do you get picked? To- dude, so I was actually thinking about this last night because um, coming here and I was like, It seems like when I was, like, 9 to 12, there was these kids that, like, Ferguson's were, like, on Burton, you know, and probably younger than 9, you know, maybe 7 or something, you know, like, whatever. These people are, like, on Burton, and they're, like, you're seeing internet videos, and you're 
like Kyle Mack. I remember seeing him. He was like 12 at Super Park hitting this 100-foot jump. Like, yeah, I remember so. seeing that, and that's like on the Burton website that you're like seeing, you know? And I was, I was like, what the fuck? Like this person is the same age and is killing it. And so there was like, I, I don't see as many kids like getting like a Grom on the team, you know, who's like actually part of it and like getting a little bit of guap and like maybe going on like a jump shoot, you know, a spring jump shoot or something like that. That was like pretty normal. And so I think like my dad would help and going to USASA nationals and stuff would help and like whatever you start to meet people you send emails like you send this clip that you did or you send your results from the year and like all of a sudden you get some stickers or something you know like you get stickers and then like I remember uh like Cody Warble's dad is Eric Warble he was an Oakley rep for a long time and like the fucking man but I remember seeing him (laughs) at the local snowboard shop powder tools and he was stocking the Oakley, like, shelf, you know? And he was like, yo, like, what up? And, I, and like, that was one thing where I was like, yo, like, that's sick, you know? And I've traveled, like, with that family, like, quite a bit since then, you know? Um, but, yeah, I guess you just meet people. But it is weird looking back. Like, it was normal, I felt like, at that time to be like, oh, I want to be on that Burton trip. Or, like, why aren't I there, you know? Why is that person there? And now it's kind of more rare, I think. That's interesting. Well, you're also probably getting good too, I'd imagine, right? That's that's, yeah. a, that's a factor that that plays. Some people are, how do I get sponsored? Well, you have to be fucking good at snowboarding. Yeah. Sometimes people forget that. <laughs> no like doubt. Key ingredient. It's actually no the doubt. key ingredient. And, but another another thing I heard there too is like, oh, I, I met you know Cody's dad at the at a snowboard shop. That's such a crucial thing for people to to hear. It's like, oh, I met this person at a you know shops are you got to meet people in person you got to get out there and and then one last thing i wanted to highlight is that earlier you said um i how did you put it you're like uh oh at the oakley thing i learned how to fall yeah yeah can you talk about that yeah i mean like you're going to these red bull camps and like there's good people there you know doing gnar stuff and like there's it's not like the mountains open and you're just cruising like it's kind of intense and there's people up top and there's people at the bottom and there's like somebody making food and so it's like you're not there to not try things and through that it's just like you got to get scared and you got to fall and there's like no other way around it than to like trial and error boom 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 and most of the time, like, you won't fall and die, you know? You're going to fall, and it's going to be fine. And then you'll fall, and it might hurt a little bit. And then you'll land it. Or maybe not. Yeah, that's the thing. Getting As you get better at jumping, you kind of start to trust your air awareness a little bit where you totally. know, like, oh, I'm I'm going for this trick, but I know I can kind of squirm my way out of it and get my board under me right. if I'm at, like, five and it's not looking right. Exactly. Right? Is that what you're kind of describing? Yeah, like, you'll be trying a 720 or a 900, and it's whatever off the takeoff you're like this isn't working and maybe you try to land 540 because that's the only thing that works in the air Mm -hmm. you know but that you only learn from trying Mm -hmm. and i think that that was like that was important for me because i would try stuff every day and it would be scary and like that's cool you know Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool to scare the shit out of yourself. Yeah. Well, and if you're not trying, you might not get invited back either, I imagine, right? Dude, and that was the thing. Like, yeah, I remember talking to you. my dad and stuff too before, and it was like, not like, yo, you better learn 10 tricks or you're fired, you know? But it's like, you better go and try your hardest or else, like, they're not down. Yeah. They don't they're, want they're you. They're going to pick up on know? it. Yeah. They're scouting in a way, you know? For sure. And, like, I was 14 or something. Like, they don't, they'll go for the next kid who's 13. Who is trying? So you uh, landed a triple, or is it a triple cork? Yeah, triple cork. Yep. At, in that edit, hashtag yep. Nick Baden, which you guys should watch. Get <laughs> uh, <laughs> those views up. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, and uh, fucking, dude, how old were you when you landed a goddamn triple cork? That was like early forefront of triple corks. I, yeah, it wasn't like, they were pretty norm, like whatever, X Games. 
And dude, I think Marcus Cleveland did one like a couple weeks before and Instagram was a thing and I saw that and I was rooming with Scotty James and he did one like the day before. I was like, fuck, I gotta I gotta just do one, you know? And I tried so many times. Like I tried for a day on the it's like the last it's a pretty big jump. It's like the X Games last jump. But it was super slushy. Nobody's really hitting it. It's snowmobile laps. And I landed on my back like 10 times, 15 times, you know, and kind of landed one and never tried one again or something. I was going to ask, that was my or, next question, do you still got that trick? No, I, like, did it once and then obviously didn't try it again that day. Like, yeah. Awesome. Done. And then I went to uh, Whistler, like, Camp of Champions that summer, and I remember Kyle Mack was, try or like, trying them, and it was a pretty small jump, and I was like, fuck it, I got to try one now. And just landed on my back like twice, and then late, and then like the next winter, there I went to Aaron Style, and everyone was doing them there. I was like, "Fuck it, I gotta try one." Tried it, landed on my back, and that was the last one I tried. <laughs> like so, that was kind of embarrassing, you know, like at a contest and you just splat on your back, like not doing something that you really want to do. Yeah, it's like Spoilch. I think Spoilch. homie yeah. at X Games this year, Japanese homie, Ooh, dude, you, was you, getting bodied. Would, Did you watch that? Shit? Yeah, yeah. Dude, what are your... Dude, just, and he's sick. Yeah. Like, oh, so he dope. laced a couple jumps before that. What's his name? That's what's so gnar. Um, Oh, my God. I'm blanking on I it. I forget his name. Uh, it's not Yuki, right? No, it's Yuki's homie. Oh, my God. I forget his name, but... I got a question for you, Nick. Um, basically, I don't know if you watched the X Games, but they they were doing 1800s, which is two 900s, Crazy. by the way, off of one jump. Um, and... Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts on those on those big time? Like, what, what's your thoughts on an eighteen hundred? I don't really want to try one, <laughs> but like, if you, if if you want to go for it, I wouldn't if it was me. But I mean, uh, do you have to? If, if to win, you have to. You, you have, have to. kinda, yeah. yeah. Like, what? There's no other option. Like, I think there was a few people that did an eighteen hundred this year, right? And yeah. like, it's a quad cork usually, and. It's a whirlwind, and like they land it. I don't know. Like if I, if they didn't land it, I think I would talk more shit on it. But if they're doing it and landing it, I guess good on them. Um, but I wouldn't want to be in the big air contest when people are doing that. Like I don't know where I would. I think fit in. You know? There should be two big air contests, or one that is judged like this. Should be like one big trick, like a fucking call it an eighteen hundred. Yeah. And then there should be a mandatory 900 and under. Mm. Like, so, like, imagine a back rodeo 9 yeah. and then a front 14 yep. or what, nose grab or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or, or, or kind of, like, put more value on... On the tweak and the style. The twe yeah, I don't know. Maybe just emphasize the tweak and whatnot. What do you think? I actually saw one. It was called Freestyle CH, and it was, like, a, a city big air in Zurich or something, Zurich. I think. Yeah, I've yeah. been to that contest before. You have? Mm-hmm. And it looks mad fun, but I remember one year they did that format, actually. It was like 720 or less, and then one trick, that's up to you. And it was maybe like a three-run format, so if you fell once, you could choose whatever. But I think that would be beneficial for the viewer and the athlete. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, would other people really care about like that? I don't know. Like, Dude, because you and I would, you know, but like, I don't know if like homie in New York City watching would be like, Oh, sick 540, <laughs> you know, like I just saw this dude do a 1900 and he laced it and flipped four times. Now you did a 540, like that was cool, but yeah, I wonder what's why more don't you just do another layman, one, huh? you know? You almost need the you need them to balance each other out. Yeah. You like need the both, like you need the saying. 540 to you complement the 1900. That's why I think like a slope style contest could be sicker if it was more like Less trick bait, which is hard to say. Like judging some, judging a trick contest, not as much on the difficulty of the trick, but like you watched X Games and like basically you got to do something gnarly on every jump, and then like kind of on the rails you can get away with like not doing something super gnarly, but like you got to lace it, you know. But it would be sick if like somebody did do a back five on a jump and then into a cab fourteen if you wanted to, but it's like. At least there's a couple hits in there, or like in a half pipe run, somebody does a straight air or an alley oop or something, you know. I think that would add to it instead of like 
a big air contest where it's like maybe the big air that's just what it's for like you just get mm -hmm. as gnarly as you can and then something like a slope style where it's like an overall thing would be a better place for something like that but i don't know but dude take, take i don't know the formula. for example take tour gears switchback five method yeah like anybody can watch that and be like holy shit that was like he's upside down yeah, tweaking like he's like Gary A. Hawkinson out there. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, this kind of, this kind of pivots uh, us to something I want to talk to you about, and that is coaching and snowboarding. Thoughts? I don't think it's a bad thing. I've I uh, grew up. I grew up in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and they call it Ski Town USA, and um, they're like they're psyched because the winter the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club is like the the ski and snowboard group there, you know, and they've had like countless Olympians come out of that program. So they're like Steamboat's known for like pumping out Olympians. And um, so I grew up part of the Winter Sports Club since I was like four, like forever. Um, so I've always kind of had a coach, but like. I think there's a way to be a better coach than others, you know? Like, you could be a dickhead and be mean and, like, only care about the competition at hand, you know? When really, like, I remember my coach one time, it was nationals or something, and I was freaking out, and I was probably, like, 13 or 12 or something. And they were like, it's okay. Like, it's nationals, you know? Like, next year you're going to have a revolution tour or something. And she was just talking about how there is, like, a bigger picture, and I think... As a coach, that is what maybe should be top more than just like snowboard technique. I just I've had like really cool coaches for me, so that have taught me way more than just snowboarding. You know, like I spent time with Bill Enos. I spent a couple years with him, pretty much like off and on. I would be with him like all year, you know, and we would share rooms, and he would just like give me advice about how to do better on the course the next day. But then like. Everything he talked about was about girls. Like, every <laughs> analogy would be about girls, you know? So he'd be like, you know, there was this one girl that I, like, I was making out with her or something, and I I, went, I made a move too fast. Like, you can't make a move too fast, you know? And, like, <laughs> that to, to me, like, that stuck with me more than, like, when you're on the takeoff, wait, you know? It's, like, this little analogy of this person who I look up to and is funny and, like, gives me shit you know it's not like a coach who's just like you're killing it man like <laughs> i don't know like bend your knees and you're gonna do great you know he was more of like a homie that would like be like yo you're not riding that good today you know or like i knew i knew you were drinking last night like <laughs> that's not good you know like whatever it is he would be there and i think a coach for those reasons is actually pretty cool yeah going going back to that it Bill, Bill Enos coaching. is like a life coach. Yeah. And yeah. he teaches you, you know, you take these kids, you know, that are 14, 15, 16 years old that are on the U.S. team, and they don't know all they've been doing is snowboarding. He teaches you how to live. And if you look at Bill's life, like he's out on the boat in the summer, and yeah. he's just like a blast. Like I've seen him. I pulled up with Pat Moore at his property, and he's... 525 he's, East. He's 525 East. He's driving a bulldozer down the road, grading it, and he's like... I'm like, hey, what's up, Bill? He's like, you don't want to confuse this for I-80 for how smooth it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Big dude. old wad of chewing tobacco in yeah. it. He's, but he's teaching you, like, how to... He's, like, teaching these kids how to drive cars and shit, Dude, too, just, right? like, that every coaching. day, like, this is a good way to look at life. And, like, he would always say, best job I ever had, you know? Like, he's got a, he, His wife was always at home, and that was shitty for both of them, you know? And, like... But he would be like, best job I ever had. Every day he would wake up and tell us that, you know, and that is inspirational. You hear that and then you like, you, you want to listen to what the person has to say. I think that's like more of what a coach was to me. It was like more of who you are and like what you have to say than your actual snowboard knowledge. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's perfect timing um, because we actually have a guest question from Bill Enos. Uh, no way. And, uh, That's the, sick. The guest question is presented by Solomon. Uh, I ride the Solomon Taka split. It's designed by Takahiro Nakai. If you're unfamiliar, he is a Japanese god of style. Ripping snowboarder, Olympian, all that. I love the board. It's the perfect flex. It floats in powder. By far my favorite split board I've ever ridden. I was out there the other day. I felt like goddamn Rob Machado. 
out there just hacking the snow. Uh, Respect. Recommend the taco split. And that brings us to our guest question. And this one is from the man we've been describing, Mr. Bill Enos. Hi, this is Bill Enos, Nick's former coach. How are you, Nick? Glad you're uh, doing fine. I hear you hurt your shoulder, tugging it a little too hard, I'm guessing. Um, my question is, right after Sage won the qualifiers, we went to a party. I don't know if you remember anything about that party, but could you uh, please explain to Chris what happened I remember you were dancing with a bu with a bunch of girls, and then you were sitting outside, and then after that, it was kind of all a blank. Wow, on the spot. Um, too much tugging, huh? Yeah, shoulder injury <laughs> due to too much tugging. He was correct on that, <laughs> dude. Straight up, he goes, he says, Nick. Nick hurt his shoulder? He's 21? How do you even do that? Are you tugging it too hard? <laughs> said yes. I said yes, Bill. He was masturbating too hard. Yes. <laughs> Obviously. Master baiting. <laughs> Part of the game. Uh, yeah, dude. Um, Sage won. We were hyped. Bill's hyped. We went to... I forget what it, it was called, like Underground or something. It was in Mammoth. It was that one right by Pita Pit. I know where you're talking. I've been there. And it was popping off. like Nike party, correct? Yeah, I think. I think You know, like they had a table and like pouring up and whatever. And I went, I got in. And like whatever, like once you get in and you're young, like you get lit. Because that's what you're there to do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> at least that's what it was for me. It was like. Oh, I'm in. Like, take advantage, bro. Let's do it. And, um, dude, I got wasted. And I was outside, like, sitting on, like, a planter or maybe on the curb, like, just dead, like, puking or something. And Bill, he was like, all right. And he was kind of fucked up, too. And he, like, ran <laughs> rarely drinks. And, uh... He, like, came out, and he was, like, I'll drive us home or something. And then he was, like, actually, I'm not. I forget what happened, but, like, basically, I think my pants were, like, kind of on my ankles or something, he says. And I was puking outside, and I'm, like, looking like I'm 15, you know? Like, I'm not supposed to be there, and I'm trashed. Like, I, I look, like, homeless <laughs> or something, you know? Like, man, man. And, yeah, and then he took whatever. I think he got us a taxi. And I was, like, maybe puking on the way back. It was pretty bad for me. But <laughs> that was basically the story. That's it. Like yeah. you said, like, I don't really remember. But we were there. We were getting lit. Um, he came outside. I was outside puking with my pants off. And then <laughs> he puts me in the uh, taxi. And then we went back to Mammoth Mountain. And we were both staying there. We were probably rooming together. Maybe not, but. The way he described it is he's the U.S. team coach, caretaker of this 15-year-old kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's coming out of the Uber into the hotel, like, puke and just pants Because Bill down. was sick. Like, he wouldn't want you to get in trouble. Yeah. But then, like, the next day, he'd be like, you fucked up, dude. He'd like, let you know. Yeah, big time. You fucked up. Yeah. But he also didn't want the police to find you there with your pants right. around or your like, ankles and puke on your shirt. <laughs> or even anybody else from the U.S. team. Like yeah. He really did want the best for, like, because we were kind of his squad. He wanted us there, like, just like we wanted him there. Uh, So, yeah, he, like, wouldn't tell the higher-ups, you know, but <laughs> it was kind of shitty. And then I, I was, like, <laughs> we were always on, like, his list of, like, tell these guys to not fuck up this week kind of thing, you know, like... Make sure that they're, like, the contest first, contest first, you know, and that was kind of hard for us, but he was an awesome person for that because he would, he would save you if he had to, you know. Did you ever, I heard this fascinating thing where he would set up a grid on the jump. Did mm -hmm. he ever do that with you? Can um, No, he didn't set up a grid on the jump, but he would just, like, like, if this was a patch of snow, if it was just a flat, flat, uh, flat thing of snow, whatever. He would draw, like, a square being the jump takeoff, you know, with, and it would look like a jump, whatever. And then he would show you, like, how your S turn would line up to the end of the jump, you know, because you want to be going off straight off the jump, but you can't just go straight into the jump to, like, do an 1800, you know? 
you need an S turn. But if you do the S turn too early, you're going to drift super far left or you'll drift super far right. And uh, so that's that was the grid that he showed me. Mm-hmm. And he would he show me that, that all the time. He has that science figured out, huh? Mm-hmm. Dude, he's got everything figured out, bro. Really? <laughs> no, but yeah, it seems it like works. it. Like, well, it is. And if, if you watch like a, a, a more novice person do a back seven, they hook like a hundred feet from left to right. That's yeah. an exaggeration. But if you watch like stall or you watch a slope style contest with these guys, they come in and you're essentially what he's explaining is your setup turn matches your line for how you take off. So you want a slight setup turn that's almost straight and then a slight setup that matches so you're able to go straight off of the jump. Without or even feet. if it, it could be super wide, yep. but the timing has to line up to where you, when you're going off the end of the jump, your board's straight. So it's like... The S of your carve matches. Yes. So the, the beginning of your S starts like here 100 feet up from the takeoff of the jump but like you go this way that way and you try to do it as even as you can you know and he would always like like you don't want to be speed checking 10 times and then jump into your s turn because you're like where am i type of thing you know mm-hmm. he'd be like go straight do a check here and then like go in normal you know just simplify everything oh shit that's interesting and it works you know like if you can go straight off the jump you're, you'll have better pop and it'll look better. Yeah, I, I heard uh, he at one point got spray paint out and spray painted grids on the snow or that's something sick. like that and to show exactly that's super fascinating. He's the man. He would do whatever, like, whatever it is to get his uh, idea, like, gr- ingrained in your mind. He would do whatever that takes and, like, whatever. For me, it was always talk. He would always talk about girls <laughs> all the time. He knew you perked up. Like just yesterday, he said the same thing. <laughs> Every every analogy was like, yo, it was this chick. And it <laughs> <You> worked. <know? laughs> yeah, there was a few. I said, that. well, Bill, we can't talk about that on air. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> so I heard a rumor that you left Burton on your own accord, which is very rare, um, to go to a brand that has been helped you out a lot. And uh, I feel like that may be your breakout moment. And on this show... Uh, Pub Beer is a big sponsor of ours, so uh, they present the breakout moment. Let's get into our breakout moment presented by our friends over at Ten Barrel and Pub Beer. Pub Beer supports us, and you should support them. Their tagline is cheap, fun beer. Now, Nick, before snowboarding became a big, serious career, back when it was cheap and fun, do you have a memorable breakout moment? Yes. Um, My breakout moment was probably getting on Adidas, like we were saying, and... That was, like, it's kind of weird because it's not like anything really changed fast, but it was, I was on Burton, and I was, like, a youngster, and it was sick, and my friends were on there, but, like, I grew up with um, Taylor Gold, who's, like, a fucking shredder in the halfpipe, and he got dropped, he won the U.S. Open and, like, won some other stuff, and then got dropped that year. And then my f- other friend Kyle Mack at the time like got straight dropped too. And there was other people who were older that Burton? were getting dropped. Yeah, like we were all on Burton. We were homies, and like that year they dropped a bunch of people, dude, a bunch of people. And it was like fuck, like it was just kind of scary, you know, like because they did hook me up, and you know, like they had my back, and that was sick. But it was like you kind of bailed on my homies. Like it's kind of weird. And then Adidas was so cool. And they had, like, people that I looked up to big time. You know, like, Kazu, I've always looked up to big time. Give that guy an air horn. Big time. And, uh... You think we should... I think we should give him a super air horn. Let's give him a super air horn. Let's give him a super air horn. Go crazy for Kazu. Kazu's got to get the super air horn, He deserves that one. Dude, but it was sick, you know? Like, their team was so sick. It was Kazu... Jake Blavel, Keegan Valeka, Forrest Bailey, Ejack was part of it, but was kind of fading out, I think, when I was coming in. And then uh, Lewif was, like, just getting on, too, when I was getting on. And that was so sick, you know? And, like, Alex Sherman was also getting on kind of at the same time as I was. And uh, Derek Lever was as well. But, like, this was... Uh, kind of unknown to me. Um, 
But then all of us, that was kind of why I ended up leaving Burton. Because, like, there was a few reasons, you know? It was like, they kind of bailed on my homies, which is no big deal. I get it. But then it just makes you a little bit weary of the future, you know? You're like, well, they just bailed on this guy. He just won everything last year. Like, I can't do that. Yeah, what's <laughs> I, it going to take till you get yeah, bailed on? You I know? didn't even make finals, you know? And, like, for some reason, I'm still in here, but I'm younger. Like, this dude... I don't know. It was just kind of scary. And so it was kind of a new beginning for me. You know, it was like, I don't have any friends really on the team, but it's people that I look up to big time. And it was just a cool place to be able to grow, I think, for me. Like, we could do whatever we wanted, almost, you know? And so that was probably a breakout moment for me. Totally. Uh, from from an outsider's perspective, looking at the timeline of... Baden. Oh, and uh, by the way, Bill called you. He goes, oh, Iron Baden. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, dude. I've never heard that one. <laughs> but you, uh, going back to that, if you look, it's like Burton guy, hashtag Nick Baden at it, triple cork, right? And then it's like the, the Adidas comes on, the kit's looking good, this kid's swagu <laughs> beef, you know what I mean? Young style and, guy. And then what, what was the thought process b- behind beef. switching from going – all right, contest guy, triple cork to your back to <laughs> to. Um, I don't want that title. <laughs> no, 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 con- I feel you. Sweat, no contest guy, but like absolutely ripping. Um, and then okay, get on Adidas. I'm gonna I'm gonna mainly do video parts, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna be style god. It wasn't that quick, you know. It was like I would still like ride mad contests, and I wasn't filming anything. I was like 16, I think. And it was kind of weird. I was still riding for Red Bull. I didn't really have friends on Adidas, but it was like this new thing that I was doing. And it was exciting for me. I was psyched. But there wasn't like a quick shift in anything. It was like, this is just a a new thing that I'm doing. And these people support me. And I remember like we had one U.S. team camp and uh, Pierre Minhando came out and Gabe Langlois who probably both deserve big air horns. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they came out and just, like, rode with me at Breckenridge for a couple days. And then it was at the same time as Zoomies 100K, and uh, Gons was there. And he's on Adidas. So we went and rode with Gons for a day. And, like, I was like, this shit's so sick. That must have been cool. You know, like, yeah, it was kind of instantly, like, damn, I'm – really happy to be a part of this because it was a hard decision and uh so i was like i was really psyched to be a part of it even though i didn't really know it wasn't like right like burton you know you've got somebody to stay with at every contest you've got two people at the top of every contest like whatever you can do whatever you want because there's people got who got your back all the time and then with adidas it was like all right i guess i'm kind of like up here doing my thing with my friends i don't have a team manager up here I'm staying mostly with Bill. Um, and I think that was cool for me because it, like, kind of separated what I cared about, you know? It was like, what do you care about? And Bill, a lot of the time, was, like, would ingrain that in me. Like, what do you want to do? And I would always, because he was, like, there's something special about a competition person, and I do think that, too, you know? That, like, it takes a certain drive rather than somebody who's just filming a video part to win a competition. Um, and I respect people that can do that big time. I think that's sick. But he would kind of talk to me about that, and there was just not many people, like, not many of my peers my age were in the same position as, like, going with this new team to hopefully build on it. Because Adidas was pretty new at the time, and it just allowed, like, a lot of, allowed my imagination to, like, think of cool things to do more than just, like, this contest is this week, and if you don't do good, you're kind of fucked. Um, which I kind of felt pressured from Burton at the time, you know, like, to really show up at everything. And not that Adidas, like, there was no pressure, but it was like, this is what I want to do, and those are the people that I want to ride with at some point, so, like, I should probably go do that. Yeah, crazy... Uh thinking about it like that from your perspective. And I, it kind of made me think, throw back to just doing contests back in the day. And I was wanted to pick your brain on like it, when you, when you win, it's you're on top of the world. And when you're not winning, 
you're bummed. Did you feel like your kind of mental headspace hinged on how well you're doing in contests at all? Yeah, big time. Uh, especially for like. 24 hours or something like I remember when Sage was talking about it, he would give himself 24 hours to get pissed and then like you better leave that in the dust um I would get pissed sometimes and like throw my helmet or something you know like I would get bummed but then it's like who cares and like yeah he won but it kind of takes a step back because when you're in there in the contest circuit going to the contest every week this one to that one with the same people you're like, oh my god, dude, that dude it won last week, you know, he got third the week before, he's killing it. But if you're not in that, you don't know at all. Like, maybe you watch X Games, but at the same time, if you win X Games, or like, if you're watching X Games, the person who wins is kind of out of your head within a week or two. But when you're in the circuit, it's like... It's all you think about. For sure. All of a sudden, it's like, that's the guy that wins everything, you know? And for me, it was like, I just kept falling, or like, I would do decent and not make it to finals or like whatever whatever happens and i would get pissed and then then it was like i swear it was one year of being pissed and then the next year was like all right i don't really want to be here anymore and that was the year you won rookie of the year no that was probably like three years later of like oh, kind okay. of like being in the con like two years later maybe being it's in the contest the but being like yeah. yeah and that it felt weird because like, now looking back, it's, like, maybe I could have done better at those competitions, but my attitude at the time was so, like, not competitive. I'd, like, get up there. Like, the beginning of the week, I'd be, like, I'm going to fucking win this week. And then I'd be at practice, and nobody, like, is really doing anything in practice because they're, like, all so good. They can whip it out the day of. And so I would kind of, like, be trying some stuff in practice. I don't know. And then... By the time the contest happened, I was like, I don't like anybody here, and I don't really like all the people at the top. I don't like the starter dude who's, like, <laughs> chatting me and, like, telling me to hold on, you know, and, like, won't let me go ride the half pipe. Like, I hated that. I couldn't go ride the half pipe because you're there for slope style. So, you, like, I wouldn't even – I would get kicked out of half pipes, like, pretty often. And that would just piss me off. Everything made me angry about the competition at, like – by the end, so it was like, that was just, if if, I, if my attitude was better, like, through the whole thing, and, like, I was there to really win, I would probably have done better, but, like, I was just caught up in, like, I don't like that, and fuck that guy, like, well, I you, don't know. you take a 16-year-old kid and tell him, you need to do this, and yeah. you need to do that. Oh, you want me to do that? Well, I'm actually going to do the fucking opposite because, that, right? Like yeah. that's what Big happens. When What's you're, crazy like, too when you were with Burton, they got all you kids together, but pitted against each other, and that had to be crazy. And it's not even pitted against each other, but but if you don't win, it's just like you're a little bit of like, forward, yeah. so it's kind of like exactly you're it's my like friend, Lord of the Flies. I can meet you. Yeah, it's Lord of the Flies, and like in a perfect world, two people would like it'd be like. Uh, Nico and Freddy or something, you know, where it's like they're both just trying to be the fucking best and they both kill it. But for me, it was like, I don't care about this anymore. And then the people that I that I liked at the competitions also didn't care anymore. Like, that's <laughs> what we had in common, maybe, you know? And so it was like, this just is a waste of time, basically. Like, if you're not there to win, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And for I real, thought especially that Especially if you're not happy. Yeah, and I thought that too. It was like, if I, like, I want to win this thing, I don't want to be here to get seventh. So, but then by the time the contest would happen, I would just be, like, caught up in just dumb shit around, like, I would be just angry at everybody and everything. And, uh, that's why I don't, I didn't do that good, I think. And then it was just, like, I don't want to do it anymore. Which happened to be the same year Bridges started the beta project um which was a snowboarder video for that year that like focused on younger dudes and i happened to be one of the people that he chose to do that and uh that was sick you know because like it was me and brandon davis i was with him a lot and he was also in the video and gabe ferguson was also in the video and he was at the contest so we would like all three of us would be there and just like hate it and we would be vocal about that you know 
And then, boom, like, that was the Olympic year. None of us made the Olympics. Uh, I wasn't even close. Like, I got close to the, the Olympics before, you know? And then it was like, let's just try to film this video as best we can. And then that was when I was like, this is actually, like, really i like this a lot like i'd ridden powder at home steamboat like has six snow a lot so i knew how to ride powder but that was the first time like building jumps like actually trying to clip up with your friends but like it's cold and you're hiking and like i learned how to snowmobile a little bit he's like this is what i want to do and i had a i had a crew to do it with it wasn't like a lone soldier type thing so it was there the opportunity was like for the taking you know that's where you sharpen sharpened your teeth. And my sponsors so were down to support that, which was important. It's cool Pat picked you guys out. Yeah. Cuz you were all pretty stylish dudes and I mean I don't know if maybe he sensed that about the contest and just the group of people there. That just was ghostly on its huh? own, dude. Yeah. Weird stuff happens in there the booth now and again. Yeah, we get some ghosts in here. Ugh. Um, uh, but yeah, no, that was cool. It was a cool group of people and like I got to know some of them and I knew Krugmeier and I knew Gabe and I knew Jared, but like then we all get to go on a trip to Europe and it's like us, like hell yeah, and yeah, you guys the are snow sucked, it. you know, oh, but you it's like time, fuck though, yeah, huh? yeah, we like had I'll the tell best you what, time ever. That actually is a perfect segue for our second guest question, which is uh, once again presented by Solomon Snowboards. Here we go. Hey, Bombhole. Uh, Jared and Gabe here. I got a couple questions for Nick. Um, for our boy. First off, I wanted to ask Nick about the uh, accommodation that he booked for us in Austria um, and the living situation that followed for the next couple weeks. And then our boy Gabe here has got a question from a long time ago. I would like to hit Nick with what happened to his face when he was trying to hop a certain fence in New Zealand. I think that will uh, lead to a pretty nice story right there. Uh, love you, Nick. Fucking hope you're living it up. Have a good time. Peace. Shout out to the bomb hole. Love you guys. They would probably be hyped on a shotgun if I could. Oh, he's hitting the shotgun. Woo! Oh. Woo! Oh. Sorry about that. All good. All good. <laughs> Baden is uh, shotgunning a pub beer for the listeners. Wow. Let's give him. That might be a super, super air horn. They needed that. Cheap, fun beer. <laughs> Dude. Boom, uh, boom, boom. For the people listening, uh, that was, I don't know if we clarified, that was Gabe Ferg and... Um, Jared. Big Air Jared. Yep. yep. They're the best. Shotgun Both for the fun. boys. They're going to love that. Yeah, they, they need that. <laughs> um, that was a great shotgun, man. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Jared's question. Oh, yeah, the accommodation. So we Chris, get- none went in your mouth, did it? No, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> uh... We went to Austria. We all fly in. I was on the same flight as Gabe, or I thought I was. We meet Jared and Tyler Orton, Leland McNamara, uh, and Krugmeier at the airport. So it was us five, or like six. And Brock was there too. Maybe Brock, Crouch, and Gabe and I all traveled together, and then we met them, or whatever. We all meet in the airport in uh, Germany. Then we drove, we rented a car, Tyler's driving, I don't know if he's like ever been to Europe, it was, our crew was kind of insane, you know, we're all like super young, Tyler's first like real video, um, Leland is sick, but like kind of stony and whatever, and at the airport I'm like, oh, I'll book us a place, like I kind of been to, been to Austria a couple times, I'll, <laughs> I'll lace it up. <laughs> And I I booked it for a month later, and like by now it's <laughs> oh. like, dude, we're driving and it's dark, and like we're in this van, and it's we're like looking out the window, and it's like, damn, there's a lot of snow. Like tomorrow's gonna be sick. We should get to sleep. We'll be hyped. And uh, I like walk. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll walk in, sort it out, and then we'll get everything out. And I walk in, and they're like, no, like that's for next month. And I was like, no. Like, <laughs> Do you have anywhere? And they were like, no, it's holiday. Of course, it's holiday course. there, you know? So it's like, you got Austrian holiday, but then you got German holiday, which is probably the week after. Then you got Austrian or uh, Italian holiday, which is like the week after that. So it's like three weeks of everything being booked. And uh, <laughs> so my friend Drew Hastings was there with Torstein. That's actually who Brock Crouch was with. He was there already. And uh, so I was like, dude, like, 
do you have any room at your hotel? This place is full. They said, you know, they've got literally nothing for us. And he was like, not really, but we could maybe make it work. So he talked to the hotel dude there. And you know how, like, it's kind of uh, bed and breakfast style. Like, they have the breakfast area. So we get there. And this guy, the owner of the hotel, has cleared out the full breakfast area. But he's like, we don't have any extra blankets. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> It's just this open floor no. with, like, the table stacked in the corner. Like, thanks for hooking it up. Be- like, actually, thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, at least you had a like, roof over your head. And I, I, I'm the one that screwed up, and I went and slept in the bed with Drew and Brock. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sleeping in between those two. Three of you in the bed. Which, like, isn't sick, but it's better than Jared and Jacob and Gabe and Tyler and Leland that slept under, um, like, a floor mat. Did they it was have like to floor like, mats like around. They were all scattered. There was like, a, some of them were like wearing a towel maybe, but like not really. For a really. blanket. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever gear they had in their bag. But like basically. not really, you know, like kind of just scattered around. Like in Did they have to be gear? up by breakfast so breakfast yeah. could start? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it wasn't a problem to be up. Like nobody slept really. Yeah. You know, like. There was no sleeping under a little floor mat. No, they were dust. screwed. <laughs> I kind of slept in the bed, but uh, <laughs> it's a dick move. It's such a dick move. You literally, like, they <laughs> couldn't find any rooms in all of the area because it was holiday. <laughs> and shout like, out to that guy for giving you guys a roof over yeah. there. Yeah, true. And the first place that I messed up booking was still like an hour from these guys' place. We were driving around for hours. Then we get there. We're like, yeah, hell yeah. It's dark. There's snow. Let's go inside. Got shut down. Had to drive another hour or two. Got there. Basically, like, f- sleeping on the floor for those guys without a blanket. Kind of shitty. Right off the long flight, too. <laughs> Jet lag <laughs> as fuck. How mad were these guys? Dude, I mean, I don't know, but, like, everybody makes it seem kind of casual at the time. But, like, they were probably pissed. Like, Leland? He must have been pretty bummed. Dude, Leland's chill. He was yeah, probably he's the chillest chill. one yeah, out of probably, everyone. Probably Krugmeyer right. was probably the most pissed. Yeah, Krug, I was going to say Krug is probably the mo- most vocally pissed. Um... You can just but sleep yeah, whatever, his dude. hair, all that hair that kid's got. Dude, and we got, whatever. At that time. We get there, like, tomorrow's, like, the sunny day, and then after that, it's kind of shitty. Like, so then we get up, eat breakfast, get lunch stuff, get our bags packed, go up to the mountain, and uh, you could get, like, a one-up pass for, like, a ski tour or something. Or maybe it wasn't even, you couldn't even have your snowboard with you if you got that pass. So we all got those passes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Krugmeyer and Jared get through or something, and then the rest of us are stopped. Like with our snowboards, we're like, "Oh, we thought we could totally make this happen." Like at the ticket office, they told us, "Like if you try to go through, you're screwed." Yeah, and you were like, "Oh, we got this. Yeah, we got Save this. like we got forty this. bucks." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, s- come on, you know. And uh, finally, we got up that lift, and like we got back there, and it was pretty sick. We built like two jumps. I think Jared actually got a clip that day. Jacob was just pissed. Like, <laughs> dude, like, he built this jump with Gabe and didn't land shit the first day after not sleeping and was just pissed. Just bombed. <laughs> Which I totally get. And then, whatever. And then, so, it was, like, kind of weird getting a spot. And then we had linked up with this photographer who, li- who lived there named uh, Theo Ackworth. And he was like, I've got a homie that you could stay with. And we were in... His name was Dom. We were at Dom's house. And it was him, his chick, and maybe a homie. And uh, they were in rooms. And then the living room, they were like, the living room's yours. So there was like a couch, like a like a beanbag bed. Brock like got this little mattress and put it in the in the hallway. Whatever. I was, like, kind of spooning someone every night. I was always, like, moving around. <laughs> Basically, don't let you book uh, accommodations yeah, like, for European I'm travel. Yeah, like, definitely, I'm not the one to book, I guess. <laughs> and then part two of that question was... Uh, Something about your face and taking a fence. Taking a spill? Yep. Dude, I got to finish the story about Dom, though. Oh, there's more. Right. I'm sorry. Dom, sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Dude, yeah. so they're smoking mad cigs inside, and... Everybody's smoking. They have this chess board, so Gabe and I are, like, playing chess sometimes. And then two more of their homies show up. They're, like... And they're all from England. And uh, so they were just trying to get, like, wasted. Like, we were trying to get weed, too. And then the homie was like, yo, could you just, like, get me an ounce of weed? And we were like, dude, like, it's pretty hard to get weed around here. You like, can't really get just an ounce on call like that. And uh, and then 
one night, probably the reason he says it is because we always talk about train spotting. It's a movie. Mm -hmm. Great movie. And one of the Euro homies, first he was rolling up these joints that he was calling Jeffries, and they had like weed, hash, tobacco. And I guess like a Jeffrey is like, put whatever you want in there type of thing. But he was smoking these Jeffries and like inside in our, what is like our room, you know, but it's actually the living room of the house. And his name's Dom. <laughs> so it's like, all of this is like pretty funny, but kind of shitty. Cause we're like trying to wake up early and do shit, but the snow's bad. <laughs> so it's like, we're kind of drinking and like kind of not on it. I don't know. And, <laughs> all the, and then, one of our last nights there, Dom is like, yo, we got to watch the movie Train Spotting, and then you guys can just go to bed. <laughs> we we're like, dude, we're not watching Train Spotting before we go to sleep. We're going to have nightmares. Like, you should just go to bed. Your room's over there. We This is our little couch. Like, leave us alone type of thing. And that was so funny. But it was his house, right? Yeah, it was his house. Yeah. And they would just smoke mad cigs in there, and we would try to sleep there. And it was like, every <laughs> dude, oh, my God. One of the roommates slept walk and uh, slept walked. Sleepwalks. Sleepwalks. And one time Tyler was on the couch by himself and woke up and homie was right here. <laughs> just, <laughs> Dude, like, at him. yeah, but like asleep, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's <just> creepy, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't really say anything, you know? It's his house. It's like, right. True, it is his house. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. That's some st Stony Buds is a big yeah, sleepwalker. Big sleepwalker. Big really? sleepwalker, yep. Do you ever fall asleep, like, in random places after you're walking? No, like I'm asleep while I'm walking around. Yeah, and, and then happens. you fall back asleep. Like, you no, just you're crash like somewhere. Uh, I you just all of a sudden wake up and you're somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah, I, I, I have know. a. I was hanging out with that. I used to live with Scotty Stevens for a long time. Yep, he's a big sleepwalker as well. Oh, and Stevens is too. Yeah. Oh yeah. He also used to fall asleep with the Seinfeld menu on it all the time. Bam, 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 bam. bam. <laughs> you just loop all night. But, uh, <laughs> That's got to be good dream. Oh, That's I like, was. It's like dreams for snowboarding, maybe <laughs> kind of like. Dude, <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget though. One time I was, um, I had, I was dating this uh, girl at the time, and um, we were being intimate, we'll say, and um, I, we were doing, we were hanging out, doing our thing, and. Uh, he, there, Scott was just standing in the doorway, looking at us. Watching you, <laughs> but asleep. And I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> and he wakes up. He's, like, he's all, whoa, man, I don't, I don't even know how I got here. <laughs> he woke up as he was standing there? No way. I'm like, all good, just get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, dude, Ooh. so let's go part two of that yeah. question. Um, so then we were in New Zealand. I was pretty young. It was... Uh, it was actually with Bill, you know, it was, it was like the first, like, Olympic qualifying event kind of thing. But it wasn't even totally a, a qualifier. And uh, I kind of forget, like, whatever. We're all in the bar. Oh, and it was like, it was the same thing. Like, oh, I get in. I got to get trashed. And so I got in with my friends. We're all getting wasted and then. For some reason, somebody wanted to leave, so I was like, or no, oh my God, Kyle Mack puked on the bar. <laughs> right on the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, me, him, and one other homie go into the bathroom, and I remember we were peeing in the sink as he's puking in the bathroom. <laughs> and there's a huge line, but we just bypassed. We were like, we got to get here. And so then I was like, I'll walk you out, Kyle. Like, I'm, I'm super chill. I'll, I'll get right back in, you know? And then I walk him out. The guy getting back in is like, dude, you cannot come back in here. Like, you you can't even walk. So I walked around because I know there's, like, this fence that's, like, kind of tall that you can climb over and you're in the bar. So I went in there, or I, I'm on top of the fence. Whatever. I fell and my pants got stuck. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> then my pants ripped and I, I slammed face first onto the concrete floor. Like, God. wow. Yeah, and... um. What, like, it wasn't anything bad, you know? Nothing bad happened, but it definitely was like, damn, that was kind of weird and sketchy. And I just walked back, and I had this bloody head. And, and your pants are ripped. Yeah, <laughs> like, whatever. That, I don't remember that night, but then I remember waking up and be like... <sighs> like, kind of, you know when you wake up, like, you're like, all right, my hands are all good, you know? And then, like, I had a shirt wrapped around my head. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, just blood. What is that? <laughs> Go to the mirror, like, oh, my God. <laughs> and whatever. Then then there's Bill, you know, to 
be there 10 minutes after you wake up to tell you you're just an idiot. Yeah. You know, which is like just what you need. That's the actually. right response. That is. Yeah. yeah. Like it's actually exactly what you need. So that was both of those. Traveling with the boys. We're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about the Icon Pass. Own the season, own the stories, own the stoke. For winter 21-22, across more than 40 unique Icon Pass destinations, the mountain community can explore wide open spaces, cut endless lines through fresh mountain air, and discover new adventures with old friends. Explore what pass option is right for you and take advantage of limited time spring pricing, including the Icon Pass for $849 adult, Unlocking the most days, the most mountains, and no blackout dates. The Icon Base Pass for six ninety nine adult opens up a season of adventure with limited blackout dates, and the Icon Pass Four Day for only three ninety nine adult allows you to kickstart your ride. As with last year, every Icon Pass comes with adventure assurance, including credits in the case of COVID nineteen closures and the option to defer the value of an unused pass, no questions asked. Whether you ride four days a winter or whether you carve out twenty. Every moment spent in the mountains is a new opportunity for discovery and connection. Because as the mountains connect us, these unique communities are what holds us together. Own the season, own the stories, own the stoke. Discover pass options and claim your moments in the mountains at iconpass.com. Okay, Nick, I want to get into a great subject. That subject is talking shit. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) I great feel, topic. Great I feel topic. Like, uh, topic of discussion. Many people in our uh, space are uh, they don't do it much. What are your thoughts on that? I think talking shit is healthy and necessary. <laughs> no, but I really do. Like, I think it's important for people to uh, have an opinion, and like, there's just a lot of people that uh, like take things personally. About their snowboarding or their friends snowboarding or like, yo, you don't like that person snowboarding? Like, you must hate them as a person. Like, that's not true, you know? Like, I can be a really good friend with someone and not like their snowboarding. Or like, dude, like, I'll like somebody's sto- or I'll be their friend and I don't follow them on Instagram because, like, their Instagram's super annoying and just trying to sell me stuff all the time. Like, I don't really want to follow that. <laughs> and they get bummed. But straight up, like... <laughs> yeah. And maybe maybe they see that I unfollow them and they get bummed or maybe they don't, whatever. But, like, we can still be friends, you know? But, like, I just don't, like, it's okay for me to talk smack on your boarding, I think. When, like, there's a lot of times in our group of people where it's, like, there's a lot of mutual friends and, like, different ideas on certain people. Like, that's just the way things are. You meet people in a different scenario or you've grown up with someone and then they meet you and they're like, Whoa, that's kind of weird. I didn't know he was like that. And so then you're like, Oh dude, like I fucking hate that guy's snowboard and the way he tweaks his grab is not right. <laughs> or like whatever the like really simple thing is, you know? And then you got to follow it with, but he's so nice. And like, I like <laughs> hanging out with him like at nighttime or like a quick disclaimer dude, he's so fun to like get dinner with like yeah dude he is but like i don't like the way he snowboards and or i don't like him whatever like it's okay to say that and it sucks that like it's got to be followed up with like covering both bases of like yeah i don't really like that but you know he's so nice and i like him at the end of what you're talking yeah, like you're talking a bunch of smack you, and you, then you're like i don't really think so when you say yeah but he's he's really nice that you i mean you that sentence blanket like you don't give a fuck about that person that's like a disclaimer fucking asterisk like yeah i'm just saying that for my own conscience i love yeah. that that's a fucking great point <laughs> like that's what you have to say about that person is he's nice after you talk a bunch of shit like okay yeah, I guess. Like, <coughs> he could be nice. <laughs> you just talked a bunch of shit on him. Like, <laughs> word. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> sick. Sick, he's nice. Like, cool. I didn't think he wasn't. You were just talking how you didn't With like that- the way he did his 720. Like, nobody fucking cares either way. Like, he's probably a great person. Or maybe you're talking shit about how he's a terrible person, but you like the way he snowboards. And... Whatever, you know. 
You know how that, I don't know that it, resonates is on the bucket in front of us that we mentioned a million times. But I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everybody. At the end can't of the day, please yeah. them all. you can't please everybody, and a lot of people are trying to please everybody. It's like yeah, you know, and it's a f- and like people despising someone for like talking a little smack, like maybe. You need to get smacked in the face a little bit. Like, it's okay to talk smack on people, and it's not that you're an asshole or you hate them or whatever. Like, it's okay to, like, talk a little bit of smack. And I'm not, like, encouraging, like, talking behind your best friend's back. Like, whatever. But it's okay to talk a little bit of smack about somebody snowboarding and then not have to follow it up with, like, he's a nice person, like, (laughs) cool, he's a nice person, whatever, like, that doesn't make me want to be like, yeah, sick, let's go on a trip, you know, it's fun to, to like, go on a trip, exactly, like, it's fun, it's fun for you guys to go on a trip, probably, because you're, like, talking smack, not only on, like, the, like, the food that you're eating that day, but you're also, like, being homies, and you're talking about snowboarders that you like, and then snowboarding that you don't like, and then whatever, like some joke has popped up and it's boom, like that's gold. It's funny. And it's just part of it. It's not a bad thing. It's not like I hate you forever type of thing. It's just I don't rock with that. And if and you don't rock with it, that's fine. Total, that's great. That's fucking great verbiage. Uh, there's also different levels of shit talking. There's like no lighthearted like roasting. Yeah. And then there's like Which is healthy. hurtful hurtful and whatever but I, I what i'm hearing is it's like what i think the underlying thing that i hear is it's it's just important to say what you think yeah you know don't feel like you just say what you think yeah and like coming from contests and stuff like that um there's just a lot of people to talk shit on so it's like it's easy to talk shit and then say well i hung out with him that night and he was sick you know it's just easy to be like there's both sides, and that's okay to say. Like, it's okay to not like the way he boards and be friends with him. It's okay to be friends with him and not follow him on Instagram. Like, it's not the end of the world. It's the way it is, and we're living in it right now, and, like, nobody's done that before. So it's okay to hate on stuff. It's, it's right cool. To be it's yourself natural. is what yeah. it is, right? Have your own opinion and voice it if you want to. I got a Patreon question for you that's kind of in uh, – it's a subject that people talk shit about in snowboarding. So I guess it goes along with what yeah, we're saying. Yeah, hit it. Perfect. It's from uh, Magic Narwhale. Great name. Good name, huh? Yeah, super. So uh, what are your thoughts on the size of lips that people build for urban spots? There's big debate about big jumps and little jumps, and he understands that uh, different spots call for different setups. He just wants to know where you stand. Do you think uh, something too big is whack, or do you think they need to be small? All right. Um, a heated topic, it seems like. It's this is always chatted there, about. Yeah. And I'm not the best person to ask. Um, but I would say, like he said, every spot's different. Um, do as least as you maybe have to do. Or maybe like you try it with a bigger lip and you're like, all right, now I'm a little bit more comfy with it. You can cut the lip down. We're working with snow. It's easy to work with. I don't know. What do you think, Grundy? Uh, you know, it's, it's a tough one. There's, it's, uh, it's, it's a, like, obviously, uh, let's just be real. Obviously the dopest thing is when you see somebody shredding a gnarly low lip, right? Like there's a clip mm-hmm. of Jeff Anderson, um, that Shane Charlebois filmed and he does a back lip on this handrail and it's like a bump and you're like, God, that's so dope. Yeah. And then, you know, it depends on where your head's at. Like, you know, for me, I, I was like, I would get kind of obsessed with, with uh, doing, like, I want to do a front three onto a handrail. But you can't really front three onto a down bar if you don't have a little something to get you up there. off a bump. And and the way it evolved, I think, is, like, if you look at JP and those guys in the early days, it was, like, gnarly low. And then there was, like, Cooley and Nima came out in people. All of a sudden, there was, like, some fucking wedgie Jacksons up to these rails, dude. (laughs) Like, up to a down bar that's, like, And I was like, oh, you can do this? Oh, like, and it's like, oh, the difference between I'm going to do a a front 180 – whatever or i'm gonna do some buck and so we were like well i'd rather see a front three with a bigger lip than like a than a nose press with no lip so that was my argument but like obviously the dopest thing is a gnarly low lip yeah and that's my take as big as the feature that's a problem you know right just looks well and it's noticeable if there's no lip and it's noticeable if there's a big ass lip so it's like you probably want to be on the side of the lower lip 
if you can control it. You don't want to be built hitting a down bar looking like you got a Chaz, Chad's, Chad's gap, gap wedge yeah. onto that hog. It really shows in the photos more so than video, I think. You can't really be blocking in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't Dude, seem like to that's me. a good good philosophy right there. This this kind of ties into what we were talking about off air in the sense that um, we were kind of talking about like refining your sense of what's cool and what's not cool, right? Mm-hmm. It's it, like uh, you were talking about how you know back in the day Breezy yeah. was hitting the biggest shit and it was ten feet tall, yeah, like, or forty feet tall, but like maybe the landing was huge. Dude, and, that's badass. And but now it's maybe the. The spots. You're, I'll let right. you take it and just like, elaborate. I think just like thing, like people saw. There was like snowboarding's pretty new, so there's like extremes that you see. You know, you see like a Dan Breezy do super gnarly stuff, and then you see Rav take it in a totally different direction. Both are so cool, and now like. I think a lot of people my age have seen both of those sides and they're like, what side do you want to be on? But you don't really have to choose a side, you know, like everybody is going to ride differently. And the more snowboarding that goes on, the more precise everybody's going to get with like not only their trick, but the way they do their trick. And so now you're seeing like people do pretty insane tricks on pretty gnarly features too like without a lip which like before you would maybe see like a super gnarly trick on a big ass feature that's like kind of safe i guess i don't really know but like there's there's a new sense of precision that is in like today's snowboarding compared to older times and it's the way you do your trick and what it's on that is taken into consideration a lot more now than before because there's been people who have done so much of everything now that it's like you kind of have to have a certain flavor to your jumps you hit and the rails you hit or like whatever your style of snowboarding is. You kind of have to have your own twist on it, but it doesn't have to be the gnarliest thing because that's kind of already been done. So people can look at that now and say, I don't really care to do that, but I can take that similar mentality into a what some would say like a smaller, less scary feature, but you're like way more precise on what you're doing. But at the same time, like if I was Dan, I'd be Dan Breezy. I'd be like, whatever, like you're a little bitch. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> like, I jumped over a street. Like, come on. You know, what's your take like, on that, bud? <laughs> or like Travis Rice, you know, yeah, like he's probably looking at people like, wow, like, yeah, you're smooth, but whatever i could have been smooth doing that 362 i was doing double corks i think Scary. everything comes in cycles yeah and there was that big everything getting bigger 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 and it got to the point where people were almost gonna die out there and it got too far and some people talk shit on it because they don't want to have to step to that level so they back yeah. down but at least when they're styly when you go out with someone that's style very stylish like a rav you baden tweaks like crazy Every time I've shot with them, dude, it, Thanks, bro. that's what makes an awesome photo and yeah. a dope video and really stand out the swag. And like timeless footage or photos um, stands out no matter where it is or who it is. Yeah. And I think that's what's cool is like there's a lot of people really t- like honing into what they want to hit, which is cool. But at the same time, I like when somebody's able to do whatever. But like it's cool when you see a specialist specialize and they kill it. Yeah, that's right it, now sick. style I think is just leading over mm-hmm. over bigness. Style, flavor, spot selection. Yeah. If you're talking in the world of video parts, you know the shift that that like you said going back with Breezy, if you look at bigger 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 and all of a sudden people are renting fucking bobcats <laughs> to build right. a goddamn too landing, far. right? We went too and you're far. like, "Holy <laughs> shit." And it's not that that's like that shit's actually not it's tall, but it's not it's not scary. Like, you know, right. in a sense that you're like, oh, like I'll, if I make it to that gigantic pile of snow, I will be totally fine. But yeah. like there's a there's a jaw drop moment of like, holy fuck, that's tall. But then if you look the kind of the evolution, you, I'm going to use Jake Kuzik as an example. Yeah. And then Kuzik, you're looking at like bigger spots perfectly. Like you look around, the snow is like there's no big piles of snow. It's meticulously and it's like, planned out. He's done the tr- he'll do a trick like 18 times in a row to just refine it. And then you you watch it and you're you're 
you're kind of like, holy shit, that was that one had the spice that I needed. And right. then, um, going, what's your take on? Because I know Keegan, I've heard is like you get what you get. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You, you, or what's your thoughts on when you're filming refining the trick and doing it a bunch of times, or you get what you get? Like you land it, and that's how you landed it. We're keeping it. Uh, I think it depends on the trick and whatever. You know, I'm definitely more on the you did it thing. Like you freaking did it, buddy. Like <laughs> let's bounce. <laughs> you know, like you, let's great job, and it looked great. <laughs> And I do respect that natural, like, look of things when you're like, wow, <laughs> you just did it. And at the same time, if you're watching a video part and you're watching a bunch of sloppy tricks, you're like, okay, what what does that even mean? Like, that's not that sick, you know? But, like, when not every time, it, you can't do that with every spot, but if it's something scary or, like, whatever the jumps getting blown out the landing or maybe you're getting kicked out you take it and you're psyched and like i'm all about that i'm all about just taking what you can get and it's not even like a cop out like take what you can get it's more of a uh like that was the moment and you fucking nailed it bro yeah, and, and like it, he filmed it well and you're hyped like you can see in the footage you're excited and it's over like <laughs> that that Let's feeling of like your homie being like yo you killed it is sick and i think so many people are like let me try that again let me try it again and it's like yeah like you might land it a little bit more smooth but like it's not that moment it's not that exact like Let's, there's some you truth landed it and you rode out and there was that feeling that like you watch somebody ride out sometimes and you're like wow like there was something about the way he rode out that made him nail that trick. And I think that that happens the first time you land it. You know, you're like a little bit surprised and you're like, I, I did it, <laughs> you know. The excitement. And whatever, a little sketchy is cool. Drag your arm. Whereas la land number 14, you're like, yeah. as you're landing, you're like, did I do everything right? And you're you're like looking over at the tell. filmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're looking up at the filmer. Looking like, at is the that filmer it? like, is that like, it or what? <laughs> Yeah, bro, you did it ten times. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I mean, hard to I've, figure out which one's the one. Now. Totally. I've heard Stevens like board hit the snow and be like, I don't know. What do you think? Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before he's even dude, like riding out. <laughs> he's the dude that does it, which is cool too. I respect both. I respect somebody who's like a perfectionist who's really wants their tricks to be manicured. Yeah, but it doesn't <laughs> give me the same feeling as somebody who will nail something and the excitement. Let that run, you know. <laughs> let it bark, if you will. Let it please bark. let that bark. Well, it, it is a special time. Oh, I think wow. It's that time. Yeah, it's kind of late even for it. <sighs> late in the Woo. game. Here we go. Name that video part. All these buttons are all sticky. We're getting buttons. <laughs> <laughs> a little beer bath. <laughs> Name that video part is presented by the Dew Tour. Uh, they got a great skate event coming this summer. It's green lighted right now, as far as we know. So we get a chance to check that out. Should be a lot of fun. Now, uh, Nick, what's your confidence level? Low. Zero through ten. In between zero and five, probably. I'll, I'll give it a 2. three. Two point five, three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, three. Three. Okay. Three. Oh, three. Okay. Here we go. Oh my god. Dude, wow. I'm so I I know what it, I like. If I was to see it, I would recognize it. But uh, isn't that Valeka? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's correct. Keegan, is that the Burton part? Is that in color? In color, it is. Wow, in dude. color. Damn. Wow, good job. The three to a score. He's got. Damn. He just earned himself a. Uh, Bomb hole cooler wow. filled with bomb hole merch. He's got uh, some sweat Thank pants. You. I gave you some XL sweats because I figured you want the fat doggers. You know. Um, you know. We got a. <laughs> you know I what do. else we got in there? I think some sunglasses, Thank some you. stickers, all available at bombhole.com. I actually meant to get you guys a gift, but it was like last minute. And so I, all I got was a couple of bubblies. That's dope, dude. We, we, you know we love bubblies. That's something we're going to use. Yeah, we will use that. So part two of Name That Video part is uh, for the listener viewers. If you know the answer, comment on the photo of Nick Baden on Instagram when this episode comes out. Also, hit him with a follow. 
while you're over there. Straight up. Here we go. It's a great video part. Thank you guys for playing. Did you know that one? Uh, I think that song was used in Zoolander, actually. (laughs) Count it. (laughs) Will Ferrell. (laughs) Name that Hollywood movie. (laughs) I'm going to go Zoolander. Um, I'm thinking maybe we hit a couple hot takes. Woo! Hot takes! Let's go hot takes. Um, jumping into airbags. I wouldn't. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Okay, weed. I would. Right on. <laughs> if, if you want to, do it. But, like, I'm not, I'm not the bit, like, I'm down with weed. But at the same time, I'm not like, yo, blaze up, bro. Like, if you're not trying to smoke, that's cool. It's cool to No not, pressure. Especially when everybody else is smoking, it's cool. To like not smoke, <laughs> it is, and you you got a clear mind. Yeah, eighteen uh, hundreds on a snowboard. Also, I wouldn't teach their own. All the power to you. Okay, uh, this one. Um, steroids in snowboarding. <laughs> Run it up. <laughs> yeah, what's your Dude. take on that? <laughs> I've thought about it a lot because it was like being on the U.S. team. It was I was always talking to my parents about like. How, like, because you're on this program to where somebody can show up at your house at 5 a.m. and drug test you for a piss test. And I was like, none of us are on steroids. Get out of here. (laughs) Nobody cares. Like, maybe somebody's smoking weed, and that's not really helping them. But do it. if (laughs) Legalize that, because... Who knows if the snowboarding would get any better, but it would be funner to watch. It'd be fun to see. I, yeah. this, is, this is my take. Maybe there's like a weigh-in at the beginning too, like a wrestling weigh-in, you know? They all like, you got to be underweight. I think steroids should be mandatory. Mandatory in steroids. Yeah, I want to see the best Commit that I can to the see. Game. It's part of the contract. I want to go past 1800s. Yeah, man. if you're on the circuit, you're roiding. Roid Everybody's up. fighting at the top. Yeah. Just a roid bar. I got another take. I got Open another roid take. bar. Uh... See, the reason why they test for weed, weed is like steroids for your style. (laughs) True, dude. (laughs) So true. I mean, kind of. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Uh, like, if you can harness that, I think. Dude, I got to say, a lot of the most stylish people are stoners. Like Bradshaw. They're just keeping it chill. You. I don't know. (laughs) When you stayed at my house, anyways. No. no. Uh, That's cool to hear. (laughs) <laughs> but sick people don't smoke weed, and that's cool too. True, there is a lot of but sick people. But blaze up, bro! Don't if smoke. you're down, yeah. Still claiming weed is steroids for snowboard stuff. I'm gonna Respect. back that too. Respect. Uh, MJ of snowboarding, Sean Palmer. Wow! Ooh. Didn't expect that one. Didn't expect. I don't that know. Either. Like, I like that though. I don't know. There's like, I I wasn't around at that era really, but like nobody talks about anybody else. Like they talk about Sean Palmer. He's the best, and he won everything. And he and was like, a wild dude, too, He was man. a wild dude, Stood out. and he killed it. And, like, made sick graphics, made memorable, like, everything he did was memorable. That's and a good answer. He was punk rock as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, straight up. Showed up. I went the biggest. I deserve to win. <laughs> yeah, biggest, fastest. Nobody's got that energy anymore. Yeah, he no. just had that attitude. He's like, oh, I'm going to try skiing, and I'm actually going to win that, too. <laughs> He's just a winner. If you dude. haven't seen Miserable Champion on Vimeo, watch that. I haven't. Oh, you haven't? No. Oh, then you'll for sure be yeah. like, yeah, confirmed, MJ. You're going to be hyped. Um, From our Patreon interview, I wrote a note of this for Hot Takes. Words to live by. Till the wheels fall off. Come on. Um, I mean, how much better does it get than like... I, I remember reading this quote from... Uh, oh, my God. Who's the dude that lived in Aspen and was like, trying to be the mayor, but he's a... Uh, Whatever. Um, Wrestler? No, he, he's a writer. Writer. And, like, was a political writer. Fear and Loathing in Las oh, Vegas. Um, Hunter S. Thompson. Hunter S. Thompson. Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. I remember seeing this quote that's like, when when you're at the end of the road, do you want to be, like, shiny or do you want to be battered up and, like, barely making it through the finish line, you know? And for me, it's like, I'd rather barely make it through that finish line and, like, have that have that be a journey where you are like, I made it, but I'm not perfect, you know? <laughs> That's really cool to me. Just the idea of, like, to get to where you want to be, you're going to have to get hurt and 
there's going to be like things that you have no idea that are going to happen to you and they're going to hit you and they're going to fucking they'll wipe your shirt off like whatever you know whatever it is you're going to get to that finish line and you're going to be hurting but it's going to feel a lot better than if you were there like with your watch on yeah you have to have lived life huh yeah so run those wheels so they fall off and <laughs> run some more god damn it that's a great I like that's that great Makes me want to go just chuck ass and fucking land on my head. Dude, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but but then you get up there and you're like, ah, my wheels might stay on today. You know? <laughs> keep these wheels on another yeah, day. I like these wheels. <laughs> Dude, there's Which a is a tough thing. Yeah. You got <clears throat> you to find that balance. There's a quote from uh, Ditka, I believe. And I think it's an ESPN Ditka. 30 for 30 big sports doc guy myself. And he's like, you know, it was in regards to him playing football for his whole life. He's a he's an absolute legend and. Mike Dicka. And, and, and Saturday Night Live as well. <laughs> um, so he's like, you know, if I could go back in time, he's like, sure, my sure my brain's foggy and I forget things and my bones hurt and it's it's hard to move around, but it's like if I could go back in time, I'd do it all over again. Hell, I'd go twice as hard. You know? <laughs> Dude, it's like, great. fuck it, hey, Dicka, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> That's what makes you excited to get up in the morning, you know? Yeah. Like, you don't want to listen to somebody be like, yeah, I killed it. <laughs> I've crushed it my life, and I'm awesome. Like, you want to hear about somebody who hurt themselves, you know? And it's hard. Like, that's part of it. Push themselves, and... It's, yeah. you got to go hell and back to fucking get to heaven kind of thing, and that's cool. <laughs> Reminds me of this quote, was it, I think it's Wiz always says it. It was like... Yeah. Yeah, there was some snowboard dad and you, uh, the big bear, and it was uh, who's who told me this. I'm gonna butcher it. I'm sorry, whoever told me this, but he was like snowboarding with his his kid, and his kid kept falling, and he's like, "It's just part of it, homie. It's just part of it." <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what Wiz keeps saying. <laughs> he's just goes, part yeah, of it. It's part of it, homie, bro. Dude, it is, and embrace that. Embrace the challenges. It reminds me, while we're on these fucking quotes and motivational speeches, reminds me of Ronnie Coleman, okay? You guys know the legendary weightlifter? He's like, black dude. I feel he's like just, I've heard the name. Dude, he looks like just a specimen, right? Definitely on the roids. On the roids. <laughs> Big time on the roids. Roiding um, out. He would qualify for my version of the Olympics where steroids are mandatory. <laughs> so he's he's like lifting up these huge bars and everything, and he's like, He's like, everybody wants to get big, but ain't nobody want to lift no heavy ass weight. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll put up like 700 pounds. Or something. <laughs> it's true. I feel that way. Everybody wants to get big, but yeah. nobody wants to pick up no heavy ass weight. You know? Yeah, mm. like, that really goes through any walk of life, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to be good, like you got to put in reps every day. Like there's, that's like Red Bull time for me was like reps, 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 reps. And, uh, and then hanging out with red a lot recently in the last few years, like I've been in his house where he's got these features in his backyard and like, you can go out there and get reps, make muscle memory basically happen. Huh? And like, Just... that's what makes things work. Like you got to snowboard a lot and you got to put in reps, but that's not only for snowboarding, you know, like you, whatever you do, if you put in reps and reps and reps and it doesn't work and it doesn't work, like that's the key to success is like just repetition and you'll figure it out, hopefully. <laughs> Trial by error. Yeah. We get DMs all the fucking time, and, and it's just such a corny question for us, maybe, because we're like, how do I get sponsored, right? And it's like, you, I mean, there's a million answers to that, but you got to get good. How do yeah. you get good? Reps. Re like, you got to snowboard a fuck ton. Look at dude. Red, dude. Red snowboards like four hours a day. Dude, like, if you... as And it, it'll be kind of quick, you know? Like, if you aren't snowboarding that much, and then all of a sudden you just get those reps up, like, you get stronger in all the right places, and it, that will happen. It'll be kind of slow, but, like... The confidence goes up when you're on board dude, all the time. if you're on board for a week, and then you take a day off, or, like, you, you're on board for a week, you feel good, and then you take a week off, like, you'll lose a little bit. And uh, that's been hard for me, like... Being in the competitions, you're snowboarding every day. You don't have to focus on anything else other than boarding every day. You go film something. You've got to build a jump. you got to check the weather. You might get kicked out of a spot. You might... Whatever happens, happens. And then you're just not snowboarding as much. 
and it's so easy. Like I hurt my shoulder. I, I haven't snowboarded for like a month and then I get back on my board and like, I feel all right. You know, like I've snowboarded my whole life. I, I feel all right, but it's not like when you're in April and you've been snowboarding all year and finally you're like tricks feel good. Like it takes a year for your tricks to feel good before you're like, all right, on to the next. Sometimes that's cut short because of the winter. I think you're like, I'm just, just starting to feel it. And it's April. <laughs> like, damn. I wish I was back at that jump in January where I tried at 720, but I couldn't because it was the first time I tried it all year. And like being on the U S team and stuff, you'll go to these training camps in like, like at these glaciers during the summer in November or something. So by the time it's January and you, you're at your first competition or like you've done a couple competitions or, or maybe you're on a powder jump, you've at least tried those tricks and landed them like 30 times at this, like on a scary park jump compared to a powder jump, you know? I think that's pretty important is like getting your reps up and just knowing that like the more you do it, the better it'll be. It's great. Facts fucking, right great there. fucking advice. Good yeah. advice. Um, <laughs> we got to hit, take a quick break and uh, talk about wild mics for a second. Listen, we need to talk about wild mics. The fact is they are a sponsor and you signed a contract guaranteeing them certain concessions, one of them being spot on the show. Well, that's where I see things just a little differently. Contractor, no, I will not bow to any sponsor. I'm sorry you feel that way, but basically, it's the nature of the beast. Maybe I'm wrong on this one, but for me, the beast doesn't include selling out. Mmm. Stony. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's like, people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. I can't talk about it anymore. It's giving me a headache. Here, drink one of these. The bomb hole. Banter. Edgy. Cheddar biscuits. Look, you can stay here in the big leagues and play by their rules, or you can go back to the farm club. It's your choice. Yes, and it's the choice of a bomb hole generation. I got a Patreon question. Yeah, let's hit it. <laughs> 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 yeah, straight into it. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of about maybe outside of snowboarding because we've talked a lot of snowboarding here. This is from Colin Gregory. So, uh, Nick, do you draw any inspiration outside of snowboarding that you incorporate into your boarding? If so, from what or who? Um, Colin Gregory? Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, pretty much everything or nothing. But, like, I think every day, I, for some reason, I think about snowboarding pretty much all the time. And so pretty much all of my inspiration comes from anything that I look at, um, so, and I like to watch snowboarding, and I like to watch surfing, and I like to watch skateboarding, so it's easy to draw inspiration from things like skateboarding and surfing, you know, they're right at your fingertips, or fellow snowboarders, but then, whatever, all of a sudden, you're like, uh, like, I like to mountain bike in the summer, like, I'll be mountain biking, and then I'll look over, and I'll be like, wow, it's super nice, it looks like a kicker, you know, like, whatever it is, for some reason, I think the way my brain works, like I've snowboarded for a long time, that's kind of all I think about. So almost everything I look at is like a snowboard thing. I can in I, some weird way, sense, you yeah. know, like mm -hmm. in some weird way, it's like that kind of looks like a jump <laughs> or like it's not a jump, but, you know, you could like you could surf through that little thing, you know, what, what, however cheesy it is to you. Or for me, everything's super cheesy when I look at it and I think like, oh, well, all I can think about is snowboarding from that, like, whatever, bro. But it's actually true. Like, I actually think about snowboarding all the time. Charlotte Boss said it when he's in here. When you're not snowboarding, you're thinking about snowboarding. Mm -hmm. Dude, all the time. And Charlotte Boss would know better than any of us, I think. So. Do you ever go escapist mind and just dream about it? How's your 
Yeah. I don't always remember my dreams, <laughs> but I have woke up a few times and been like, damn, I was ripping. Like an actual snowboard dream and being hurt and spending time. Like we had quarantine from like March last year. So we had like almost nine months probably of not boarding. Like I think I, I know that I experienced like some snowboarding dreams where I'm like, damn, like that's what I'm thinking about right now. And I'm thinking about it heavily, like, that's cool. Like, waking up kind of shocked that that's what you're thinking about. I've had that. Do you ever have those dreams where you jump too high and you're, like, falling, falling, falling? Yeah, but usually that's not for snowboarding for me. Yeah. I've had falling dreams that suck. I think they suck for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> Dude, on planes, actually, yeah, I've woken up yeah. and just, like, kicked the seat in front of me a few times or, like, <laughs> whatever, nudge the person next to me, and then they look over, you're like, yeah, sorry, you got that crazy yeah. twitch. <laughs> yeah, a Doubt. falling dream is terrifying, though. Yeah, all of a sudden. Uh, earlier, we uh, discussed the fact that you hurt your uh, shoulder in a tugging it too hard, quote unquote, right. from Bill Enos. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Um, how do you deal with the the injury side? How's how's that rehab process, and and what do you do to keep your mind sane? I've, for the most part. Haven't had too many long-term injuries. I feel like usually every winter I'll have, like, two to three weeks of hurting myself. Um, and, like, I've had, like, six months. Like, I hurt my knee when I was, like, 16 um, and was out for, like, eight months or nine months. And, like, my shoulder this time was, like, a month. Um, but whatever. Like, the whole time you're going to be thinking about snowboarding, no matter what. And... So if you can draw pictures or, like, whatever you can do to, like, kind of hit an escape in your mind is cool. And for me, I've noticed that if I can exercise a lot, like, I like to, like, sweat in a day. Like, if I can sweat during the day, I'll almost go to bed, like, I kind of killed it today. Even though, like, I didn't do shit, you know? Like, maybe it's just running from point a to point b um like if i can go to sleep sweating and know that like i'm working to heal my shoulder i'm like comfortable going to bed and i think when you're hurt a lot of the times it's hard to fall asleep with yourself and uh for me it's just like do whatever you can to make tomorrow better when you're in like a time like that you like need a little bit of light so you have to make that light for yourself and for me, it's just, like, work, like, try to sweat or try to read some of this book that, like, has this mental help in it that may help you in the future. Whatever. It's cheesy, but, like, it could help. And when you're hurt, it's important to have those, like, little things of light where you're, like, whatever. Like, my friend might think this is weird, but, like, it, for some reason, I sleep better doing it. No, oh, that's yeah. Otherwise, you can get depressed. Exactly. Right? Yeah, get, it's so easy to get depressed yeah. when you're hurt, and you have to like almost fight to not get depressed. And so, dude, exercise, reading, and and I saw you doodling, or you're into drawing and shit like that. Just kind of like in a doodle book or like whatever. I saw. I'm not good, you know, but it's cool. Like whatever, you can doodle around, and draw like whatever. <laughs> like I, I'm not good at it, you know. So I'm not like I'm putting my drawings on places or like I'm tagging something. Yeah, I think that stuff's cool, but I'm not comfortable with the way my stuff looks. It's not good enough. Whatever. Or, But that doesn't matter <laughs> at the same time. Well, um, I think it's a good time for a guest question from uh, our boy Red Gerard, which is once again presented by Solomon. Here we go. Yo, bomb hole crew. It's Red Gerard here. I've got a boy. question from my buddy Nick Baden, wondering what it was like guinea pig in Chad's Gap. And how you felt going into that one? It's a great question. Good question. I think Sage talked a bit about um, Chad's Gap or our experience on the Chad's Gap, you know. And it's like, like him, I had seen footage from a long time and whatever. Like for some reason, Chad's Gap is talked about more than any other jump ever. I think, right? Like for some reason, you're like, oh, Chad's Gap, you know. And then you see. I remember when I was younger, I saw Tanner Hall break his ankles, you know, on Chad's Gap. And then you know that that's Chad's Gap. <laughs> and so we went up there. 
And it was like kind of a funny crew. It was Sage, myself, uh, Mike Boggs, and oh my God, the web, dude. And there was it Hale helped shovel a little bit, maybe? Yeah, I don't know if Hale was there the first day. Okay, the web was there. The web was fucking Who's the web? Uh, Jack Daw. Yeah, Jack Daw. They call him the web because he shoots photos, videos, and everything. He's an all around weapon. Oh, He's the short for weapon. Around weapon. Yeah, like, dude kills it. And Let's give him a quick air horn too. Straight up. So it was like four of us, and I had been talking to Sage, and we had wanted to hit the jump next to it, which is called Pyramid Gap, which is a sick jump. And like the people, a lot of people that I had talked to have been like, that one kind of shoots better than Chad's Gap, and it's a little bit smaller. So I've always been like, damn, would rather hit that one, you know. And so we went up there, and some skiers were hitting it that day. And we looked over, and whatever. It was like, all right, we're going over there. We're going we're gonna to build this thing. And first day, maybe Malachi was there, too, actually. Malachi Gerard, Red's brother. And, or maybe he got there the second day. I'm not sure. But I think he was there the first day. And we, whatever. We get there. We just kind of start going to work, like, on the biggest build ever. Like, I guess, <laughs> like, we padded down a little zone. It was, I, I, Like, how do you start, almost, was, like, kind of a thing for me, is, like, where do you start to build this thing? And Sage just took charge, and he was like, let's flatten this out, then we'll block from over here. So you start cutting these snow blocks, and then end of the first day, Sage and I, like, walk up a little bit on the in-run, and it was too far left, clearly. <laughs> And I was like, what if we just made the in-run from here? But it was, like, way too much compression. And so then the second day came. But the, we had more people coming the second day. So it was, like, Gabe Ferguson showed up with Ben Ferguson. Tyler Wharton showed up. There was, like, a few more people. Continued to build it the second day. And then... Um, by the third day, which is kind of when we had to hit it because there was rain coming. So it was, like, kind of pressures on. But I kind of suck at that. Like, for me, the whole time I was like, dude, if, what, like, I don't have to hit it, you know? Like, I, I, I'm trying my best to do it, but if it's, like, if it's sketchy and I don't want to do it, I don't really want to do it. And whatever, it was the third day. It was sunny. It was sick. And we, like, had tried a couple runs, but the, the in run was so bumpy and chattery and scary and just unsafe. Like, you couldn't hold an edge, really, because you were on like a mellow or mogul mogul field type of thing. And uh and I remember being like kind of loud and maybe nobody rocked with it, but I was like, yo, like maybe we just don't hit it <laughs> type of thing, you know? Like maybe we call it. And that was short lived. And then um we were all we did like a Rochambeau. And it's not like a snowmobile jump where you're like sledding people up. You're all kind of hiking together, which I really like. So we were all in the jump. We did a little Rochambeau. Um, Sage got out first, which is like, all right. Like, if any of us are going to hit it first, like, this bro is probably the one to do it. <laughs> and uh, so he's out first. He's not He's not hitting it first. Because he got to choose, right, if you're out first? Right. Did like, he out for second or did he out for third? Or I think he was just like, I'm I'm out. I think it was kind of like if you if you As long lose, as I don't hit it first. <laughs> right. I don't know how it went. But it was like, all right, he's out. I got out second. So then it's Ben and Gabe, brothers, like, Rochambeau. And you you can just see in Gabe's eyes, like, he really doesn't want to do this. And then, whatever, Ben loses, so he's supposed to hit it first. So we all hike up. We're all kind of tripping, but it's nice because we're all together. Like, sometimes you're at the top of a jump by yourself, and it sucks. And we were all together. Leland's up there with his camera, and he's always kind of joking around. And uh, Ben went in and, like, was going way too fast and slammed on the brakes and, like, kind of flew over the back. From the top, we're like, is he all right? Like, what happened? Because it is, like, a it's a full channel gap, you know? Mm -hmm. It dips pretty far. Like, if you were to go, like, 40 or 50 feet or maybe 30, you'd, like, drop, like, 50 feet onto, like, a valley. Yeah, cat track in there. So we were like, what the fuck just happened? And luckily, he, like, kind of, he slowed down enough to where he only went, like, 10 feet over the jump or something into, like, some soft snow. But there was kind of a tree, and it shake, shook a little bit. So we were like, what just happened? Whatever. He was all right. And then we were at the top. It's Sage, um, Gabe, and I. 
Gabe was kind of tripping, and I, I, like, looked at Ben when he was going in, and I was like, I think he's got it. Like, there was some, like, weird click in my mind that was like, dude, we got it. And uh, I was like, I think I can do it. And I went. So you I, just opted to go it. first. You you subbed out Gabe. Yeah. But it was like it was it wasn't like a big dick move, you know. It was just like a natural, like yo, I think, I think I got it, you know. Like, you kind of need somebody like that sometimes to be like, I feel comfortable, especially when you don't feel. Com- I've been on the opposite side of it, you know, and you don't feel comfortable. Homie goes, and all of a sudden you're like, all right, we can do it, and uh, whatever. In that time, I just felt good about it, and uh, it worked out. So you went front three, FT front three. first try, correct? Yeah, yeah, I did a front three first go, and like. Landed really good, and you actually stopped. Yeah, I mean it was sketchy in the air. I was flailing, FT, but like, though, that's dope. But it was sick. Whatever, yeah. like I landed, I was flailing all around. I landed it. it was like boom. It's Gabe on. dropped next. He cleared it good. Did a back three. Sage did it next. Did a back three. Cleared it perfect. Boom. Like we're in. Sesh Let's is do on. It. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that was actually like that was a really sick time. Like I remember like hiking up from that just from the first jump, being like, damn, like. I'm kind of good on today almost, you know, <laughs> like, like I did a good job and it's like a cool, that's like a cool feeling. It's some gladiator <laughs> shit. Yeah. Like, dude, all right, is. bros, I got this shit. That is Giddy gladiator, it. dude. Like 300 style. Like it is. You and know? it's, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like hardcore, like hard body. Like, yo, I'm a man up and do this shit for you guys. You know, like, <laughs> no, it was just like, I think I could like, for some reason I felt like I could do it pretty easily at that and point. You did. Yeah. And it worked. One thing I like to get into a hard hitting topic, um, you know, were you talking sperm retention, or are we talking, like, kind of keep it casual before um, the big day? I didn't ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> in the. I don't know the, ex- the precise time of previous ejaculation. Um, I don't know my last sperm before the, but the night before. first run. No, because we were, like, in a hotel. I was, I was rooming with Sage, so nah. it was, like, Oh, there was some retention. But Sage probably did. There was some light retention going on. Yeah, I think because he's a he's a retention guy, right? Well, so, he, no, he won the Olympics. He without, likes the release. He, yeah, or he, he went, likes the release. He went uh, full release. Yeah. I mean, I want to say neither of us released before. So you don't know what he was doing knows? in the bathroom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the old computer under the towel move. Yeah. The old yeah. late night. <laughs> I got to take a shower. <laughs> the bed shaking late night in the second bed over there. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> that didn't happen, actually. But, or I didn't wake up People to that. that. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's slapping a bowl of pudding. <laughs> you. Are you eating? <laughs> <laughs> nope, not eating over there. <laughs> Is that a cliff bar? <laughs> Turn the light back off. <laughs> Are you nervous? <laughs> you got a Patreon I for do, us, dude. buds? I Looks got, like you're uh, damn, respect. I got one from uh, Jake Schneider. Schneider. Um, so you're riding for Sims. The best. He wants to know what the biggest thing that drew you to Sims Snowboard was. So, Sims is kind of weird. Like, a lot of my growing up in snowboarding, Sims hasn't been that cool. And they've sponsored kind of weird people, and they've never... They've... Dude, like, nothing that sick, you know? Like, I've never been like, yo, he... That dude's on a Sims. I want to be, like, riding that. But you look before when I was, like, paying attention, and you're like, Sims is the sickest shit ever, dude. Like, the people that rode for them, even if it was for a short time, like, the, uh, all the people that have rode for Sims for a little point, like, are pretty damn sick. And um, whatever. Like, we've talked about Sean Palmer a little bit. Like, he's the sickest. Noah Selaznik. Like, there's just people who've stood out that ride Sims boards. And... Um, Okay. Dude, big time. And, like, that was somebody who was, like, a short period, yeah. right? Like, like that was a short period, but it's, like, Marco, like, running that. And he's riding a Sims board, and it's badass. And there's people that also did that. But, um, so then it was actually a mutual friend of ours named Jordan Brown who needs, yep. Uh, Gotta hit him with an air horn. Dude, and, like... I have, kn- I've known him for a pretty long time, but kind of never hung out with him. And then the summer that Sims was kind of getting going, like we went to the skate park together and like we went, I think we all went to lunch that one time in Copper, you know, mm-hmm. and like there was just more time hanging out with Jordan. I was becoming friends with Teddy Koo, who's also working, who just got like got picked up by Sims. So basically Sims, what's really cool is like, 
my friends Keegan Vileka and Scott Blum had been like Scott was riding these Sims boards in Japan for like that season. And they were like kind of they like were interested in Scott and the way he rode and like what kind of wanted to sponsor him. But they were fully Japan based. Like there was no sales in the U.S. for like two or three years during this time because the U.S. Sims gave all the rights, I think, to Sims Japan. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit wrong in all of this, but then Scott's like riding the boards for a year. He's feeling it. And then he's like trying to try to get sponsored, you know, and then he's bringing Keegan's name up because Keegan didn't have a board sponsor too. So then they were kind of a package deal. It sounded like this, my part of the story, you know, and Teddy knows how to speak Japanese. So he's kind of the middleman who's like, yo, if you want that, you know, we could do this. And whatever. So then they all group up. Jordan, Teddy, uh, Keegan, Scott, and Jordan all kind of were like, if if you don't add him, like if you don't get Keegan on, then I'm not going to do it. And each of them said that, you know, and if you don't get Jordan on for that position, I'm not doing it. So all four of them dropped in together. And so then from then it was like, boom, like all of my dogs are part of this. And... Sage and I were talking about a board company for like four years at the time, like, and it was, and we had always wanted to do it, and it was this weird time. But uh, like, Sage has helped me more than anybody else, other than like my parents, probably. You know, like, I, forever. When I was super young, when I was like twelve or when I was like fifteen or something, I remember he had me out to a jump shoot in Park City, and it was Bodie Merrill and co-card and like a couple random people but it was like this big jump with a quarter pipe on the landing so it was like kind of a death gap type of thing and he had me out for that and that was like whoa like sick like we had met a couple times before but not legit and so he had me out for that and I like got really sick or whatever I ended up puking in like a whatever we don't even talk about that <laughs> uh whatever <laughs> off subject <laughs> I just remember you guys, <laughs> this is totally off subject, but you're like, if you don't have a good pe or, uh, shit story, then you can't trust them. But yes. like, maybe you can't trust me because I haven't had that many shit stories, but I puked all the time when I was younger. Really? Maybe bodily maybe fluids. Maybe we, maybe we bodily fluids. Bodily fluids. Yeah. Dude, like just any car ride, plane ride, like I'm puking. <laughs> really? Yeah, gross. So it's not even like food poisoning or No, it's motion like sickness. Motion sickness, motion. bro. You're motion a not nauseated yeah. son. Like you and people Brad would want to go on mm. the roller coaster. Like I would, I'm not down to go on the roller coaster. The ride up to Big Bear. Puke. Yeah. It must be a rough one for I've you. I've puked on that for sure. You got to, really? Yeah. Like up and down, you gotta, dude. You like, got to take the you, back rope. You know it's better, you know. What's now your What's go. your mo for? Uh, what, you got a code red puke scenario. What's your? I've seen my buddy Granger puke into his own jacket sleeve. <laughs> dude, <laughs> is that um, a move you ever pulled by any chance? I've never pulled that. I've pulled like whatever. You puke into a beanie, and there's obviously holes in the beanie that. <laughs> <laughs> and like one time, I was on a plane when I was younger, and my dad was right next to me, and I went <laughs> on him. You puked on your dad. Dude, like, he's like, what the fuck was that? Like, I remember we were in the bathroom. He's, like, changing his pants. Because this was kind of normal. Like, He just you, puked if, a lot. Yeah, like, if 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 uh, you were my mom or dad, you were travel with, like, an extra clothing set. And I would, too, in my backpack. <laughs> he's a big-time puker. <laughs> dude, like, nobody was, like, any... We would drive, like, three hours, dude. I was puking, for sure. Like, No way. Yeah. Dude. Does this still happen? No. Not at all, actually. A lot of, lot of drama mean? A lot of drama mean? <laughs> yeah, drama mean. Yeah, I don't know what what happened, but it wasn't whatever. It, I haven't puked for a while because of motion, but. You're um, all doing a sick air, spinning too much. Blah, 1,800 guaranteed. 1,800 guaranteed to puke. He's just all over the place. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> like a sprinkler on landing. going around. <laughs> Uh, puked but on one Bill time, Enos at least 30 times out there training. <laughs> I puked on Bill. I puked on Bill before. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> dude, we're learning something about I guess about my, good, my good puke story would be at that jump session. I got sick. This was like the night after. Like We killed it. We did a good job. Um, Sage actually killed it. Like Ended up riding into the sunset. Everybody else was kind of done. And him and I, that might have been my foot. Oh. I, I was staying, like, downstairs, and I had this bag of dried mangoes that I was always snacking on. I really liked them, and they were, like, super sugary and super good, and whatever. Like, I got sick that night, 
after we ate sushi, I'm not blaming it on the sushi, I'm just saying, and puked all that next day and like sage kind of came in at like noon and was like yo like are you sleeping <laughs> and i was like no i'm sick and i puked in this mango bag like my bag of mangoes that i was eating <laughs> i just puked in there like so i called it boom <laughs> and then and that was kind of happening all night so i'd like puke in there and then i'd run that over to the bathroom pour it out like because nobody was awake yet and then once everybody was awake i'm like kind of feeling better but like puking in my mango bag and then finally sage comes in and he's like is oh <laughs> like grabs it it's like you've been puking at this it's like yeah whatever he's just been my boy forever <laughs> dude like got whatever. your back he's got my <laughs> people back. have your like, back i would puke dude. and he, and he was like i oh, got rid of it you know and Whatever, they went and did their thing that night, and I remember I was, like, at that house, just posted up. And since then, he's let me stay at his house, like, every year I've probably gone there for over a month. That's like, so Every dope. year. And, like, one time, a couple years, when he had no roommates, it was just him and his girlfriend, I would go there, like, around Christmas time. <laughs> I remember one time they were, like, setting up a mini Christmas tree, and I was, like, there. <laughs> you know? Just hanging, like, boyfriend, girlfriend, sick. yeah. Tree. <laughs> and he's just been my boy the whole time. He's helped me out so much. Um, yeah, that's obvious. Sick. Air horn, <laughs> fucking man. He's a dope dude. But sorry, so we he were, railed the Sims. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about this board company for years and how like we wanted to to do it, and it just got more difficult, and more difficult with the factory and who was involved, and like he he was more a part of it than I was, you know? But I was like, dude, like, let me know about, like, every decision kind of, you know? And it was like, then it was, like, whatever phone calls would happen and be like, damn, like, the factory is doing this now or, like, they need this from us. And then it'd be like, all right, we got them that by the next day and then we wouldn't hear for a month. And then it was like, dude, I've got this, I had this really cool opportunity at Sims with a lot of people that I look up to. And... I've always really valued, like, being part of a team. I think that's really sick. Like, I have I grew up, like, playing sports, you know. I'm a fan of teams. But just snowboarding, I, I've always been like, yo, like, that's a team, you know. They help each other get good clips and, like, talk shit on somebody else, you know. Like, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> sick. Have each other's back. Yeah, out there. dude. And, um, and with the whatever, like, our board thing didn't work out and I had this really cool opportunity at Sims that we had talked about for like six months, you know, and I had talked to everybody there. I talked to uh, Brock Nielsen who was going to film it or like film most of the stuff for them who is. And I talked to Scott Blum. I talked to Keegan Baleka. I talked to Teddy. I talked to Jordan, you know, I talked to Cody Warble and it was like, dude, like that's where I want to be, you know? And, uh, like, I couldn't be more happy with the way it worked out currently. You know, like, whatever happens, happens. But we have a really cool group. And that's what drew, drew me to the brand was, like, those that like those four people all went in together. So it's, like, and I think Butters maybe was part of that, too. Maybe it was five people that were, like, if you're not doing it, I'm not doing it. Yeah, having some back of your friends, that's cool. Dude, and that's cool. And, like... For me, that's just hard not to want to be a part of, especially if you're friends with them. And I was, and I like riding with them. And uh, that's what drew me to Sims was like, first, there's a sick history. And then you can't this forget Terry Kidwell back in dude, the day, dude. The father like, of style there, dude. But dude, when I was a kid, like, he was just running it. And Terry Kidwell, what's sick about him is like, he's still around. Like, yeah, still going shreds. to shred stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what's cool. Those boards were dope, and they kind of kept that same look, too. Of the mm -hmm. They had the Sim Switchblade back in the day, and yeah, it's dope to see it come back with a crew like you guys have. It's just, like, memorable, you know? Yeah. And, like, this graphic, not to be a plug or anything, but, like... Plug it. Plug. This is a fucking... Like, that's, like, a remake of, like, a graphic they had done in the past, you know? Like, I don't know if that's you can sick, see that, dude. but, like, mm -hmm. I guess it's upside it's down. It's upside but down, but... What, what's the name of that board? Uh, this is called the UAP. I think... It, Unidentified something, unidentified aerial phenomena. Oh shit! Which I guess is what they're kind of calling a UFO these days. Yeah, they changed really the name of right. UFOs. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah, we like to talk about board. setups on um, this show. 
but yeah, that's like a new board, you know, and it's like a, a, a throwback to that original graphic, which is kind of cool to be a part of. That's sick. Even History, though it doesn't, man. whatever, doesn't mean anything, but it, it's cool. Well, it looks like there might be a little ode to Farmer, or I mean Palmer, yeah. Palmer on there with the clown. Yeah, with the clown. There's like the little clown on there. That's sick. It's kind of like the bass and whatever. It's cool. What uh? What's your stance on that bad boy? What do you ride? Um, I ride. I measured it the other day. Actually, it's like twenty one inches, and then usually I'll go like eighteen front, negative three or zero, or positive three on the back foot, or like positive twenty one. Positive. That's, that's what I ride, and you made fun of me, dude. Negative three eighteen. No, you go, said something crazy. I go like, positive fifteen, negative six sometimes. That's like freestyling. Or, no, I think you said I'm you honest, like. That's what I ride. We got to reference that. But yeah. <laughs> we'll have to reference that. Pull that up. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That's kind of my. I kind of fuck around like with the distance and angles. Yeah, I feel like the kids these days don't even measure. They don't even know sometimes. No, <laughs> well, I measured for put the first it on, time. Looks recently. good. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of as far as flex and board do you like to ride and size and all that stuff? Um, camber definitely. I like a traditional camber board. Stiff. Pretty stiff. Not a board. Not like a plank. You know, like a but half like by board. Yeah. Definitely stiff. To where you're not like like you can land on the tail and actually land something and not loop out or land on the nose and just loop out or I like a board that holds an edge this side cut seems like a little bit less aggressive than some of them like sometimes an aggressive side cut is kind of sweet because you can just rail an edge um I'll ride like a 53 to like 57 in like park or whatever or like the streets maybe and then like if I'm in the back country maybe a 59 or 62 or something like that Big boy, yeah. That's how I you like land. That's how you land shit. Yeah, and you can, and you make it to the landing because it's stable. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't mind a big board. I think like a lot of things look cooler with a big board. You can go fast with a big board. I like to go fast, so yeah, stiff, more stable, stiff board. Uh, when you're at a, like a, a large, like stiffer board, you can you kind of ride differently. Like you attack, mm-hmm. you go bigger. You're comfortable going faster. You know, it's Aggressive. horrible in like a smaller snowboard park. You're basically useless. Right. But if you're riding like backcountry and you want yeah, to go fast, you showed up to go switch. big, basically, yeah. Yeah. with a big board, and just speed. Like a lo- I like to go down the mountain fast and like not wait, you know. And my board probably kind of caters to that. Without Looks me like thinking it. about it, you know. Just to rewind back, when he was talking about the Sims crew, it reminded me of your Wu Tang business model. That's the model. What dude. is it? The old Wu Tang business plan: <laughs> get a sick crew and go all out, man, dude. Get, get the boys together. All out. Who was saying that the other day that I saw? We were. <laughs> were you? It was on the podcast. We did say it in somebody's episode. <laughs> okay, sick. Who was saying that the other day? Um, you know, we didn't Dude, talk much about... It's the school of woo. Straight up. Um, get us a crew and go all out. That's like, if you could do anything for snowboarding, that's what you want to do, you know? <clears throat> you want to be with your sickest homies and do the coolest thing you can. Travel the world, hang out. Yeah, and go all out. Go all out, do everything you can do. Till the wheels fall off, bro. Exactly. <laughs> hey, <laughs> one thing we skimmed over is uh, Cheddar Biscuits. Woo! Now, um, I was thinking about you, you know, one that we don't like to talk about current because that's yeah. a little bit off. T- but you You're did, not supposed to talk about current contracts ro- in life. You wrote for You're Red not, Bull. I guess, yeah. Wrote for Red Bull. Yeah. What kind of biscuits? What kind of biscuit chickens biscuit. are we talking? <laughs> Dude. Uh, Give us a little fiscal. I got, I think, like, the first year that, like, they gave me a helmet and stuff. I Is got, that the like, big thing? Like, do you get the DC ring on DC? You get the Red Bull helmet? It's like, I you're mean, yeah, but, like, yeah, I guess. A, <laughs> a DC ring is probably cooler than a Red Bull helmet, you know? Like, there's a uh, kind of, if you're on Red Bull, you get the helmet. I think, like, the DC thing, you got to be kind of, like, pro. You know, they got to, like, induct you. Um, but on Red Bull, it was like, all right, you're on. You get this helmet. Um, I think I got $8,000 for like, it was like $8,000 salary, $8,000 travel. And then like for your max incentive was like $8,000 for the year. Maybe that was like two years. What age? 13. Yeah. That's, 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 that's sweet. That's like a million dollars for yeah, a normal a person. Dollars. When I <laughs> when was you were 13, 13, you got eight yeah. racks. When I was 13, if yeah. I got like 20 bucks off somebody, <laughs> I was like, damn son. Dude, and it was, it was fucking sick. <laughs> Whatever, I'll get hated on, but from that, I bought a trampoline. Like, that's where I Boom. was, you know? Like, <laughs> I was a kid, and I wanted, like, 
Dude, when you're 13, when trampolines jump are kind of joke. <laughs> yeah, that's like, when I you're 13, one, trampolines one, are baller, yeah, they're dude. Baller, you're man. the man if you got a trampoline. Dude, and dude. I got this baller trampoline. It was sick. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> that's such a dope thing to buy with your Red Bull money. And then, At 13, like, though, what else does a kid need, man? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, after that, I got, like, a fatter contract that was probably more like 20 Gs. Like, kind of legit. And... At how old was this? Like fifteen? Damn, dude, you're making yeah, good money before that's, you were again, even working. Like age. a million dollars yeah, or fifteen like a million dollars. Dude. <laughs> like I was probably fifteen or fourteen or I don't know. And uh that one, then I like had that for a year or two and got dropped. <laughs> I remember he was the guy, the team manager, like at the time was like to be honest with you, like your contract is similar to like he said this skier dude who was like winning the X Games that year. Obviously, I didn't do that. And he was like, This is kind of the like caliber you're up against. Like, this is why you're getting dropped. And I was like, Fair enough, you know. <laughs> but like, why don't you just offer me a little bit less? Like, I'm, I'm down. You know, I was never like, Fuck you, bro. But I mean, like, I guess I was like that. Once I got dropped, I was like, You're a dick. <laughs> But he wasn't. I guess he was just doing his job. That's the problem, yeah. These guys got a but, budget. Dude, and, like, when you're 13 and you get sponsored by somebody like Red Bull, you look at Travis Pastrana and you're like, these are my boys for life, mm. you know? And, like, once you're not fitting their mold, then they're out and the next 13-year-old's in. And that's just part of the game, you know? Mm. Like, I got on and then... Uh, like Lion Farrell got on Red Bull and Red and Toby. It was like a bunch of people that like, kind of got on and it was like, boom, like we got a bunch of you now, Nick. And now you're like not caring as much. So you're out of here. And that was just like their business plan is like, well, they're, you yeah, and they're grabbing bounce. all these young kids mm-hmm. and waiting to see which one's elevating to the next level and the ones that don't are out. Yeah. And there's probably like of those like five or eight, Six people, there's probably like one or two that are still on Red Bull now. Yeah. You know? So that's like your family you right up until you're not. Back, yeah, your family yeah. right up until you're not family anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll hook you up until then, you know. Mm-hmm. They'll want you to do as good. like. And not just Red Bull. Everybody runs that, your family. Exactly. Until you're not. And then it's over. Like, And you're young and you don't care. You like, know or what, like though? you care, but you don't know what's up. Yeah. You got to be appreciative of those biscuits because they, yeah. do, they, don't, come, they don't come along. And when especially you, when you then, get them, like, take them, you know. And my parents have always supported me, like so big, to where like that money went to the bank, you know. Really, and, they were yeah, smart with smart. you. You were smart. I they, mean, they, they helped you. They to hooked be smart. me up, you know. Like I'm, I wasn't the smart one, but they would, like that money went to the bank for me, and then they would hook me up, which is so sick. Yeah. Or like whatever, you know, went to a trampoline or like yeah, which isn't which is know, baller. Yeah, well, it's also only like cool. eight hundred bucks of the whatever right. money you got, you know. Give you one, dude. Nice I got toy. a baller trampoline. It was more yeah. than eight. Oh, it was, oh, it was one of those ones <laughs> you go super high. Dude, one of those yeah, sick and like ones. there was pads around it. Yeah, dude, it was probably like two grand or something. That should help with your air awareness and stuff. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, Perhaps I can't. I got no air awareness. Tweaks. Can't jump on a trampoline for shit. Can barely do a back. You load. didn't have but one when you were a kid. I actually did. I just tramp skate. I and actually, I just that's it. Didn't come naturally. I'm like, yeah. I can't. Not that good at doing flips. I was always like hanging out with skiers when I was younger. Like there wasn't many snowboarders my age. Um so I would be, like, ride. grabbing my feet, like, on the trampoline. That's like, baller, dude. Crossing my legs up and shit. <laughs> really? Like, no doubt. Like, no for doubt. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if that's baller, but, like. It's baller, dude. Ball, that's baller. I, uh, that's just part of it. So, you know, when I was in, in uh, I think, maybe 10th or 11th or 12th grade, we uh, brought my trampoline into the school and did a demo for the school. And, that's the, and the news showed up, dude. I wish you did I flips and shit. Oh, dude, we just the whole, the whole snowboard crew just all jumped on a tramp for the <laughs> just a session. And the news showed up, that's like the, the Colchester, Vermont news, and interviewed us and all that. And so it, I sick. wish I had that video. That'd I bet be that, sick. That footage is gold, gold, dude. Um, one last thing, because I we're kind of getting yeah, we close are. to it. Um, but I was talking to Red and his brother, uh, Kai, and he was saying that you I forgot to talk about the fact that you tried to back rodeo chads and got severely. You came close, but you got bodied a couple times, right? Yeah, I got bodied a couple times. I probably tried it, like, I I tried, like, a frontside 10 a couple times, and just, like, it just wouldn't work. Like, I tried it, like, two or three times, and off the takeoff, I was, like, not happening. 
Mm-hmm. And then I tried a back rodeo, I think only like twice. And I was like, I think the way I do this move, it's a little bit too big for like the way my rotation comes around. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I got bodied a couple of times, but like nothing major. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, I think we've we've been doing it for a minute. Um, what what's next for uh, Iron Baden um, or Master Baden, whichever? whichever yeah. one. <laughs> Iron Master dealer. Tomato, choice. tomato. <laughs> uh, we're working on the Sims video. Um, I'm really excited about it, and I guess like I'm just trying to keep snowboarding and like make videos. I would honestly, I want to see more competitions, like. In a cool way, I think competitions could make it like a little bit of a comeback in a cool way, and I think a lot of people now have good ideas about how to do that and film as much as like I can, but like I think there's a a point between like filming a bunch and like snowboarding, and my best days are always on the resort, like that's just the way I like it, and everybody's different, but Every day that, like, I can ride on a resort, I think some people are like, yo, that's kind of a wasted day, almost. Like, if you're trying to film a part, people are like, why are you going to the resort, bro? Like, for me, that's, like, not a waste of a day at all. That's, like, part of the game, dude. Like, bring your camera then, you know? Maybe you'll spray some skiers, you know? Yeah. And exactly, it's get those reps up. And as long as, like, I can be snowboarding and making it work, I'm, like, really excited to be snowboarding. Oh. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I think we did it. Um, yeah. I think we did it, man. You want you got anyone you want to thank before we get out of here and sign off? I got a little list here. Sure. Yeah. Um, I talked about Sage for a while. Sage has helped me a lot. Um, I just want to thank him. Obviously, my parents, like, first and foremost, they've been the shit and, like, really helped me. Not only, like, with the competitions, but just, like, follow what you want to do and... Like, get smarter, you know, along the way. There Rarely there's, like, a snowboarder that's on the trip with you that's going to be like, yo, like, take in information, you know? Like, my parents would always say that if you're traveling somewhere, like, take it in. And a lot of times people don't pay attention to that, so that's sick. It's great advice. Mm-hmm. Just, like, the people at Sims, like, Keegan Valeka and Scott Blum especially, and Brock Nielsen have, like, hooked me up with so many things. Um, and just taught me about cool stuff. Tyler Orton has helped me a lot filming and just like having my back. Whatever. He's awesome. Help, help, has helped me a bunch. Bill Enos. There's another dude that I've worked with, or he was my coach when I was younger and his name's Luke Kessler. And he's actually, he's a mass old. Yeah. I remember him from back in the day. Sick. Yeah. Uh, do you know that shop, the garden? Yeah. 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 So he's a he, ripper dude. Dude, he's a ripper. So he lived in Steamboat for a while with his brother, and he helped me out so much. And, like, my him and I would like, just, like, go and ride sometimes, <laughs> and that was sick. Having, like, somebody older than you that kind of gives you a little direction is cool. And I've had so many people like that, from Sage to, like, people like Luke, that I feel like it's almost my duty to, like, try to help somebody do that, or at least, like help facilitate something that I can. And uh, so, yeah, I guess I couldn't thank them enough. Chaz Gouldemond. Chuck G. Like, That's dope, dude. Dude, like. He's the best. Chaz is dope. Beyond dope, bro. Like, yeah. yeah he is. Dude, like, like, you've gotten influence from him, you know? Like, oh, yeah. I'm influenced by him. Like, I, uh, I was in California for, like, the last month, and he, my like one of my biggest takeaways was he came over and nobody was at the house and I just chatted with him for like two hours, bro. And like his son Rocky was just on his bike, like slamming in the front yard. We built him a little jump and like, we just chatted about all this stuff about whatever snowboarding to like what he's doing, personal life. And he's always had my back right there with Bill. Like so sick. His brother, uh, Vertical Scrumptious, just signed up for Patreon. Yesterday. Oh, nice. Yesterday. He gave us that Dunkin' Donuts board behind Sick. your head, actually. Um, and I guess, like, the Ferguson family and the Gerard family um, have, oh, like, I've gone to both of their houses since I was so young. And 
just grew up snowboarding with them and like they've helped me a priceless amount and uh couldn't thank them enough it's interesting man you have all these people that are so dope dude that that surrounds you and that's the advice for the kid you know that wants to get sponsored meet the people man meet the good people yeah surround yourself with surround good yourselves with good people and and it, like you're saying, gonna like, happen. it's not what you do, it's who you know or whatever. Like, that's true. Like, you do need to have skill and work hard. But, like, to make, to, facil- to facilitate that, like, you need people to help. Mm-hmm. And, like, my group of people has been, like, I, I just, I know I've got the sickest people behind me straight up. Like, that's dope. Does. A lot of people have your back hard. Yeah. And it's and so like, dope. That's so dope. And, I, uh, it's, it's easy to be like, oh, whatever. Like everybody's got that, you know, it's important to really understand that. And like, and it's cool to thank people. I think it's hard sometimes, you know, it's hard. It's hard sometimes to even tell somebody like, oh, I liked your footage last year, bro. Like that's kind of a weird thing sometimes, but dude, like tell people that you like their stuff and thank people and Say please, you know, like goes a long way, man. It really does, and uh, I think that's cool. When you notice somebody that's kind of got those same ideals, you'll gravitate towards mm-hmm. them big time. And just people have had my back, so I thank all of them. God damn it, Baden, you just Good killed it. Words, uh, yeah, <laughs> great words. I think we're gonna wrap it up and get out Ooh. of here. Should we blaze? Yeah, yeah. I think spark one up. Just right, spark blaze. one up as we as we take him out. He's gonna he's gonna fucking. I think you and <laughs> Willie McMillan are the only pr- people who... Uh, That's true. Did huh? Willie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dude. Amongst other things, I Amongst believe. Amongst other things. Yeah, we don't even know what was going yeah. on. <laughs> All right, for the listeners, um, yeah. Baden is... Uh, he's smoking on something, and we're going to leave you with that. Blazing. Get out of here. And Willie I, seems like the man, by the way. He is the man. Absolutely. Let's give him an airport. The other day was awesome. Yeah, he was pretty on point the other day. <laughs> Dude, him and Todd were so funny. Those guys. Yeah, to hear Todd kind of like not on a official channel, like he was just on. He the did line. switch yeah, into he NBC yeah. mode, and when he did switch in, it was like what? <laughs> well, dope, Nick. Nick, dope. thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you guys tuning in week in, week out. And I'm gonna leave you with get those reps up, over get and out, reps up, over and out from the bomb hole. See you guys. <laughs>